Is my my it's working? Okay. Nice. Very nice. Time to put on my headphones and you know, play some disco. The problem is we've left off uh here. Yes. The problem, the problem is that I want to learn about the pail before I start day four. You see? And it's kind of uh, confusing because... Sorry. Because I, I apparently I can't, because I don't have enough uh, conceptually... Fucking hell. Conceptualization. I have one! Of course I, I won't have any... Like, you know, um, any boost to learn about it. Uh, yeah, I had to do some Google search because I didn't remember exactly what skill did I need to do this. Maybe I even need to smoke, but I don't want to. You're back. Good. What can I help you with? Okay, so another question. Where the hell are all the options about... Oh my god. Of course. Anything to help. About the world! Why? How come? Until the executions start. I'm not trying to reassure you, officer. Quite the opposite, in fact. In five days. Not more. It's a matter of days, not weeks. How oh, did I, I lose? I've been the bearer of bad news. Oh, if there is anything else I can help you with, please ask. Lynching the strike while pines. Hmm. Okay. She's not even asking you anything. It's so easy to just say. Weird. Oh no. One of the positive things to come from the revolution is the unhindered exchange of information, which okay, isn't to suggest okay. our talks constitute corporate espionage. Even if they did, it would be fine. But they don't, since mm -hmm. you logged the money as a donation, and this is clearly just gossip between friends. A referral, you mean? Oh my. A real door. My my. What I'm hearing is you inspected a premises because you suspect and yeah, sure. in the process you turned up some information relevant to your investigation. Only from Efrat, surprisingly. Hmm. Brinkmanship or saber rattling? Was he surrounded by Union men he wanted to impress? Or he wants you and me to believe he wants to go to war? Well, this is tricky. I'll think it over, Detective. Okay. This okay. gave her pause. She's pensive, suddenly. Hmm. Hard to say about what. How benevolent. Hopefully they'll help you sort this whole business out, if they haven't already. Oh my. Very int- It looks like you may untie this knot yet. There's yeah. something in you that really yeah. likes the way she's looking at you just now. Misinformation. This is all because we haven't shared information on the lynching yet. See? Already the adversary uses it to their advantage. Hurry up on that probe. The moment you tell me you're finished at the traffic jam, I will gladly tell you the company's side of the story. Wait. She but I've already done that. For a moment. That she's overplayed her hand. What the fuck? not share an info sooner. Then she settles down. Cure. Yes. That's the talk about town. What you've said is quite enough. You've given... Hear that, hero. Feels good, doesn't it? You should relay confidential information more often. Sounds mm -hmm. like he has you running errands, detective. Here? Oh, no. 
What does that mean? It's clear the village has already grown dear to her. Yeah. No, don't tell me. I don't want to know what he has in store for this place. A giant statue of him. Or better yet, his twin brother. Practically the same thing, but make first, there won't be a youth center. Whatever he has told you, all the residents, will be a fishery. Mm. I've been speaking with Lillian here. She gave me the idea. The infrastructure, sadly, is just one of the million things I'll never get round to. I just have to accept that I'll... Yes. Hmm. I'm sad I'll never have the time, Detective. She is more defensive. Full of ghosts and ancient memories. Of course, okay. Detective. You can always drop by later, should something come up. Now, what else can I do for you? I still... I still don't understand why. Do I have that, um... Ah, jeez, it's so stupid. I mean... Uh... Jamais vu? I need, I need the jamais vu thought, but I don't have it. Okay. This is so frustrating. This is literally terrible. Because that's one of the, like, several things I wanted to do in this playthrough. Good. What? What can I help you with? I cannot grasp for anything. Oh my god. It's so dumb. Okay. Well, how many... Wait. Where's back monument? Do I have that here? And maybe... Uh, okay, wait, wait. Hmm. No, I don't. Maybe I should... Oh, I wanted to visit the church again because I don't remember. I do not remember anything. Yes, please. This is kind of dumb. This is really dumb. How, how did I miss those branches? Will I be able to get them back again? Like... Oh, I forgot to dance. No, 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 no. Wait. Yes, what is it? I hate this. I really do. Because, you know, I tried so hard and got so far. But in the end, it doesn't even matter. Well, actually, this is more. This has more sense than I thought it would have, because in the end, it truly doesn't matter. I got. Yes. What is it? Still three percent. Okay. I think I'm gonna just just leave this fucking thing. Wait, I can talk to him and... Yeah, it's ecstatic vibrations. Oh no, Somehow oh the no, left oh to do no. Is the name of the club. Will you do the honors, detective? I, I forgot the... The name. Everything I managed to come up with sounds just wrong. Andre's overthinking it. Yes, you should do it, detective. It would be good for the signs. Noid's right. You've helped... How about something simple? Like the club? Too modern. <laughs> and too ironic. We don't want ironic. We want real. Real and true and beautiful. Yako Qatar! Yako Qatar! The place to be! Yako Qatar, the zone of ecological catastrophe. Hard car! Hard car to Zinega! No, it has to be bigger than hardcore. Yes! It has to be even bigger than Harcourt to the Mega. It has to be bigger than the scene. The Amnesia. Like the... I can't remember the name of the club, Amnesia. <laughs> amnesia! It's not Amnesia, guys. Okay, yeah, it's not. Suna is busy. I don't. Good. We have too many opinions anyway. True. You have? 
Well, what's the name? Like that DeLorean word for the world, you mean? But Disco Elysium, isn't it wacky? Disco's kind of gone, isn't it? <laughs> the past is the future, but the future is dead. No, it's beautiful and short. It's settled then. Everyone welcome to Disco Elysium. Nice. Andre breaks into Frenzy. Oh no, oh no, wait. To celebrate oh. the name. Someone to You should go with the flow. Join in on the experience. It feels good. It feels right. But what is this? What is this thing that Andre is doing with his limbs? I'm dancing. Yes, my man. <laughs> Talk. What is there to talk about if you can express yourself with moves? Audio waves thump against your ribcage. The speaker setup makes everything sound much better. But what if you rerouted the terrifying audio assault that the lead programmer's microphone setup picks up through this compressor? Goodbye, Fuck. officer. I didn't know that. Well, logic just helped me. Thank you very much. Yeah! Uh, everything is falling apart. I spent and invested all of my points into fucking perception. What the fuck? What the hell? Was it worth it? I don't think so. Fucking Jesus. Okay, how much is it Good now? Good morning! Yeah! Harder car! So fucked up. And I don't have anything for... Yes. Well, why... I didn't know that... Um, this sort of minor checks would need so much fucking work I don't want to spend all of my points where am I one more yeah good morning yeah okay so it's 17 percent no we need we need it to be I just want to recreate the scene. In my defense, today when I was uh, l learning about some, you know, well, Good morning. Oh, fuck. Yeah. about the side chain, the beast. Listen, you can use the compressor to select between which track it's compressing, either the auxiliary signal or the main input from the tape. Make it alternate between the signals. The compressor controls the gain based on the level of the signal on the aux side chain input. It will allow maintaining a loud sound without peaks that fill up all the headspace. Side chaining it, you said? Then he puts on his headphones and his eyes go wide. Wider <laughs> than they've ever gone on drugs. Hey, what did you do to Egghead Cop Man? Did you break him? Are you ready, pussy? Noid straightens his back, <laughs> ready for the beat. I was born ready, Egg. Yes. I'm just trying to feel the same as when I've uh, had the first play play through I can because I've seen it. Oh jeez, okay. The, is glorious. the speed freak dances on the stage. This is beauty! This is life! What in the world is going on? The way melody and bass flow together. Your body is taking a beating from the low frequencies crashing over you. <laughs> it's making you feel alive again. Introducing the ultimate sound! God damn it! 
this dance club idea might just work out. DeLorean Church! The place to be! Okay, okay. Uh, so, composure, you say. I say I have no more slots and no more any fucking thing. Jesus. It's terrible. Do I have... No, I have plus one. Oh, well... Um... Um... I just don't see a point of failing this check because I kind of want to dance, you know. It was fun the last time I oh, did. Oh, hey it. man, it's good to see you. Wait, what? Goodbye, what? officer. Wait, what? 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 Yeah. Oh, hey man, it's good to see you. You close your I eyes forgot. and see the shapes your body should form to bring this strange music into life. But just imagine the motion. Puts a grin on your face just to think about it. Even a failed attempt gets the juices flowing and repairs some of the damage it's... done by battles lost. Ah. If you up the dose and truly dance. Salvation. Fuck. Goodbye, officer. Yeah, well, okay. It doesn't really matter. Maybe I should fail that logic check too. Like, whatever. I mean, uh, before I started. Yes, what is it? Jeez. How do I learn about the pail? I, 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 I don't. Did I, did I mess something up? Where are those options? I don't understand. It's kind of fucked up. Just literally, I watched a video about from Ludonarukon about Disco Elysium, and I saw. Mm, <clears throat> have I seen there? Well, two narrative designers, like uh, Helen, I think, was the name of one of them. She's uh, a lead narrative designer at Zaum, and they were, well, walking, uh, working on Disco Elysium, and that's where I was a little bit embarrassed about uh, the way I play, because of the safe scamming and all that. But, you know, I kind of, I kind of understand why, why. It's getting. Why they say that safe scamming is not cool and that they made everything to, for people to enjoy the game without safe scamming. But the problem is, you know, the problem in all this. An old mirror hangs on the wall. Okay. You is, see the is this of your face in you know i i, I see with <laughs> checks expression for long and it frustrates me the because before i wanted to replay this game for the Across like the room, fourth the time the system hums oh. its soft lullaby the mattress feels soft and sheets warm it only takes you moments for the world to fall away <laughs> Uh, maybe I should just put on so pause b before I talk because I, I really need to say this. But before before I s started replaying this game again, I knew that I wanted... Uh, the main goal was just to complete the game on hardcore mode because, well, you know, we love, we love all achievements. But then I thought, well, maybe I should record it because I have a channel and I can post it there. Because why not? Even though there is a possibility that no one's gonna watch this and listen to me ramb rambling, rambling, whatever. I don't care. When I started replaying the game, I understood that people may enjoy this and maybe I should invest into this playthrough and not just complete the game if i were to complete this game just to get the achievement i would have done that already because it takes much less time that i've spent on this and now i don't know and i want to complete every single 
cool quests that I've had through the last month that I played this game. It's confusing. Ah, you're one fine instrument, brother. Should we get political? Do all we need those to? faces and all those names. All that laughter and screaming and scheming around. Every corner and every street. Recorded in you forever. No, you're spinning tapes at the discotheque. The great unceasing disco of the mind. The flash. The bang! On and on it goes. For untold hours. At the disco where you first asked her to dance. Rising. Rising. Behold, there are millions of them down there. The first time. The last time. The smoke in her mouth. The plotted flowers, the faces turning, changing. I would like to see narrative uh, designers talk more about this uh, love story that lasted for six fucking years and tortured the main character because it's the world. I don't understand. <laughs> And you're made of it. Every day you're out there, you make more of yourself from it. You can never forget this shit. Beautiful. It's stuck on loop. You're the son of the world again. Harrister. Harrister. A ceaseless agent. Picking up litter and old newspapers, collecting your little bubblegum wrappers and idiotic picture postcards. Meaningless, meaningless keepsakes. Mom, the game is bullying me! Reading your awful letters and recalling things, aren't you? The endless names of the world. An address book you are. The map of a city. So the first option permits to choose one of the quests, one of the political quests, but I don't want to. It's too late. Oh no. You're not Wait, <laughs> did I miss something? Anymore. Uh... You're something now, Harry. I try to draw for the working class. Wait. Solving your little crossword puzzles. No. Doing your tasks, crossing names off lists, trying to become some sort of world <laughs> detector. Are you sure you could be closing the door on a brilliant and special future for yourself? As much as I would like to show you this quest... No. <laughs> hear that? He's renouncing politics. Just another thoughtless vessel. Plowing. Beep, beep, beep. Yes, that's me. The alarm is ringing, Harry. You can do it. It's nothing. Do it for the city. Do it for the wind. Do it for the picture puzzle. Put it all together. Solve the world. Why are they encouraging me? Is something bad about to happen? It's kind of... you know... God, I can pick the thought. Please, oh please. I need this. I need what? What? Oh, maybe it's a bug because um, that's most likely a communist thought, and I cannot pick it up because I didn't choose the option to pursue the thought of communism. Well, maybe uh, reloading the game will fix this. But I <laughs> imagine, no. Fuck. My god, please. Okay, wait. Wow, so someone's been a little boring. 
What? Yes, my standard liege. <laughs> Someone's seen all sorts of wild ideas pop off and thought, I'll take the boring one. The regular, please. The brown. No need to be defensive. The regularity, the brownness. You? I wouldn't worry about that. See? You're so regular. Of course you do. Let's get right to it. My lord's copotype is regular cop. Good, good. Of course. To outright declare yourself something does seem a bit too <laughs> interesting. Okay. So it wasn't a communist thought. Good morning, Kim. Hello. All around you, rain keeps falling down on the wooden boards she's standing on. And of course. I I don't I don't get it. I don't understand. Maybe I should just get it. This is embarrassing. Wait. I had this ledger. It's the ledger you found in the trash. A cabbage of papers hanging from the board with the permeable drawer inside. It's both and the cool piece of toilet paper is stuck to the back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can piece them together using oh. the alphanumeric code on the margin. It always begins with HDB41. Then, why yes, your precinct every last alphanumeric in the files begins with it. Harrier Dubois, mm -hmm. HDB. No, the alphanumeric begins with <laughs> HDB. Raphael stamped cases. <laughs> That's comforting to hear. Now, detect. Not I much has changed it. in I the meanwhile. It. A bunch um, of sodden papers still sags from the clipboard. I have no points. I don't believe in myself. It's oh, yes. and the cool piece of toilet paper is not what you end up doing. Eighty-three percent. That's what I was thinking about. Two sides of the board appear slightly misaligned, like a drawer that's come off its slides. If you bend the plastic on your knee, slowly, the slides snap back into place. It should be possible to just, you know. Without resistance or sound, the two panels move against each other. The compartment is now open. Two ticket stubs and a handmade postcard. <laughs> the words just crossed your mind somehow. You see two ticket stuff. Two octopuses are smiling, reaching their tentacles toward each other in the colored pencil drawings. The tickets permit access to the zoo in Revachon East. The aquarium costs extra. They let you go there too. You should go and kill yourself there. Thin wax paper has been glued to a piece of cardboard. Sounds like leaves rustling when you pick it up. You see violet flowers, floral patterns, patches of glue. It smells of chewing gum, apricot flavored. A touch of cinnamon, the end of summer. You think the label says tutti frutti. Familiar handwriting lines the inside of the card, looped round letters. In a woman's hand. Harry, it begins. You're already reading. 
I wanted to write you a letter so you can read it when you wake up. Maybe it will make you happy. Throw it away, please. A merciful wind blows in from the Bay of Revachon, dusting the ground at your feet and raising newspapers far away. You feel the card slipping into it. Let go. What? Frisson covers your entire body, a feeling of cold, a persistent chill. Your hands shake, holding onto it. Every morning when I step out, you're asleep behind me, it says. I find a little piece of sadness in me. I carry it in my chest, down Voyager Road. Every step I take, it grows. By the time I reach the fuel station, it has filled me entirely. I step onto the light rail and look back. Sparks fall from the bow collector. I know it will be like this until late afternoon, when I get off the 42 and walk back to you. You, you, every step I take will get lighter. It almost makes me run. Sometimes I do. I can't believe I met you. I can't believe the happiness I feel with you. You have a vast, vast soul, and I will always, always, always come back to it. Kisses, kisses, kisses. You feel the air sucked out of your lungs and the blood sucked out of your head. Everything around you gets dark. You feel the ledger slip from your hand. No, no. Hold on. To what? There's nothing. Detective, is everything all right? Guess again. So, why? Why exactly do I see this right now after reading that note she left me? There is nothing again. Nothing said, brother. No treachery. Well, almost nothing. There is the ground below you. That's still there. And the small light that's on, fluttering somewhere in the basal ganglia. That's me, blue eyes, that's me. Who was what? He speaks of the sickening longing, the unwell emotion. Oh, Even in well. the darkness, he's crying. He made it unwell. It. The call when you're dead. Brava. Here in the paleomammalian cortex, we call it the shadow. Because it's always there. Tell him. Tell him. Ah, yes. In the old factory system, they call it the apricot chewing gum scented one. <laughs> it's unhealthy of them to linger on it so. It didn't smell nice. It smelled like betrayal. There is no Voyager Road. There are no roads, no houses, no bloated corpse of the past resurfacing. Beautiful. Believe me, stupid ape. Its lack of beauty was not... Your name is Fakul. It certainly ain't. Your name is passed out on <laughs> the ground, dragged around by one of the other evil apes. You think they would let you until you disintegrate into biomolecules? No. Someone is breathing on your face now. Yes. They're <laughs> pouring something on you. It's delicious. Glowing lights on a dashboard emerge out of nothingness. The upholstered cabin of Lieutenant Kitsuragi's motor carriage, seated in the driver's basket. The air is thick with leatherworks and heavy fuel oil. Cold water runs down your chin. Drink. The water is cold, silvery, the stuff of life itself. Drink. You haven't drunk water in two days. Did you know the human body is not made to survive on alcohol alone? <laughs> you need a secondary form of hydration. That's just a drug addict myth. In reality, you're still comprised of dihydrogen oxide, which you must replenish to go on living. 
With greedy gulps, you down half a liter of cold water. Some of it spills. What happened? You were reading your paperwork. Then you passed out. Like ten minutes, maybe. Good. You dropped these. Are you okay to proceed? Good. So this line is important, apparently, because we pass out and all that. But it's not enough info about this. I still don't. I still don't just understand what. What? No. Okay. This is gonna be fun. That's one brutal motor carriage. If I were a real skull now, I'd jack it, paint it in palm tree livery, then bottom light it neon style. A snazzy shit ripped skull mobile like this would make a fine trophy. We could like hang fucking shrunken heads from the side mirrors. Yeah, tribal shit. A cock carriage like this would have proper skull value. <clears throat> <laughs> well, I appreciate the interest you take in my brutal motor carriage. I have to stop you right there. The RCM takes threats directed at its property seriously. I, um, it's just theoretical work, copper. No basis in reality. I can tell you who we're not, cop. We're not snitches, flow bears, or skulls. Which is not to say that the skulls are bitches and on the con the part of this presentation you want to take home with you, cop man, is we're not part of the skulls. Oh yeah, Cindy's a right proper skull. Yeah, a true artist of the future. Uh, by the way, if you see Cindy... The lieutenant on your left is unusually lenient toward them. Oh man, yeah, we're not fucking kids, man. Be wary of the abyss it's a threat an impotent threat of violence but i don't in <laughs> fact i dislike them so much i'm willing to drag you boys back to the station just to calm myself down hey uh there's no need for that yeah didn't you cops like have some questions about skulls the union does their share of policing in martinez at least where gangs are concerned Mm. That's why there isn't much organized crime around here. Apart from the unions themselves, of course. <laughs> Don't you worry about that. We're gonna make up for the deficit. Yeah, we are. We're not franchise skulls. Well, not yet. Once we get our name out there, we'll have a chance to join. Because we can be just as psycho and vicious. But in a non-threatening and <laughs> definitely legal way. Sure. We'll fuck the system from the inside later. Right on, fuck. So. Murder? Uh, uh. Yeah, sure. We'll gladly. Also, he was hanged. He was hanged from a tree. Yeah, I mean. These punks don't know anything. Hey, stop right there. How does one. Fucking philosophy, man. You don't know? What kind of cop are you? The question was rhetorical. The skulls are the most vicious, the nastiest bunch of psychos ever. <laughs> Jacking carriages and getting into high speed chases. Possessing an infinite amount of fuck all swagger, infamous for their non verbal modus operandi. They usually occupy the burnt out quarter in Jamrock. Or. Ah, uh, <laughs> I can't wait to become a skull. But I'm like. What about them? <laughs> well, first off. It's a statement and not necessarily something that characterizes me as a person, oh, even course. though the statement has character. And I do like piss. <laughs> the word piss <laughs> epitomizes the struggle taking place in the world. Things being defined as they seem, not as they are. And I guess it's also about communal spirit, the future, and truly appreciating our differences. Okay. Also, you've got to admit, it catches the eye. And since the what I mean by this is we are all piss <laughs> like I said before many men keep searching for the one for so-called true love 
which is actually just obsession masquerading as kinship. The thrill of the chase. The hollowness that fills your chest cavity after catching it. To catch a fish, you'll need to hurl the law many times. And even then, it, you get more fish in a shorter time. And for time is of the essence and fleeting ever so quickly. One must think of a way to fuck the whole world. Because when one fucks everything, he fucks nothing. And that, to me, is it a coincidence that we have two badass jackets and two badass cops? Yes. What is? What are you implying? I'm not sure I understand you, detective. Neither. No. Fine. If only to end this discussion. Theoretically, if I were a juvenile delinquent, if I were to already be down that path, I think peace is the stronger of the two statements. Seems about right, especially considering your heroic <laughs> exit attempts. So are we done here? Or you don't need us around for your secret whisper party, do you? I'm ready to... No, yeah. no, no. Don't ask anything. Be subtle and scary. The boys dream about being skulls. <laughs> what? No. Skulls don't have kings. Yeah, man. Keep your voice down. Skulls don't take it lightly when folks pretend to be them. We're not even prospects yet. Wow, you boys are ambitious. <laughs> Only prospects and already planning a coup in the skulls. You're destined to go far. He gets it. Passive aggressive flattery. Shut the fuck up. Are you trying to get us killed? Now bring it to the jackets and, yes, start shouting. Please be quiet. What? What do you want? The jackets? You got it. No need for cruelty. Oh, man. <laughs> okay. I get it. Skulls don't really wear slogans anyway. Fuck. Nice. The lieutenant watches the boys take their jackets off with mild. I'm absolutely okay with not having either one, thank you. I already am expressing my individuality. I'm not. I don't have a jacket anymore. Good. I wanted you not to express your... <laughs> Cold-hearted cop. Do. I'm fine with that. The jackets are meant to complete each other. Yes. If a man was actually. standing alone on a street corner with his written on his back, it'd just be an individual that has taken a liking to you, Ryan. And I don't know, Eric. It's cold out. Yeah, let's get out of here. The cops fucked us. True. Fun fact, I'm making kind of a jacket uh, with fuck the world phrase. It's almost ready. Can't wait to wear it. Except it's very hot outside. And maybe I won't need it until September. But that's... No. It's another problem. Oh, look who's that! Oh my god! Hi, gendarme. Another rendezvous. I see you found yourself a little something from my wardrobe. <laughs> Plus Not one. Not bad it's at all. So different. What brings you here? Oh, I forgot I'm wearing his hat. Oh my god. Admiring the atmosphere. Okay. What about you, officer? Convenient. Oh yes, let's see. He knocked on my door a few days after the lynching. I think he was going through the entire building, asking questions. <clears throat> Nothing. That I didn't see anything. What friend? No. I don't think it came up. Muscular. Handsome. Strong. Like one of those military types. Yes, but he was speaking to someone on his... Just reporting back whatever I was telling him. Oh, let me think. He had an accent. He sounded vaguely Oranese. Okay. Sure. Anything else on your mind? You did. I told you, you can be very useful. I guess that's the charm of powerful people. <laughs> he has keys. And he likes friends, I told you. <sighs> that he won't be there when times get tough. Like it is. A visitor from the first world. He's not like you and me, gendarme. Gendarme. He can always return to his opportunity. Or is it just money? Okay. I don't mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What about me, gendarme? 
You can keep it. I don't mind. Oh. I can appreciate beauty when I see it. Oh, is it now? <laughs> well, enjoy it. <laughs> bye bye, Jean d'Arc. No. Uh, this is cringy. Let's say composure check. Mm. I like that characters uh, react to me wearing their wildest or items. It's kind of kind of funny. No chance to pass the check. Hi, Could oh, he be a member of the homosexual underground. This sexual thing seems interesting. Ask around, become involved. The homosexual underground? Why, yes, I am, officer. Why? Do you want to investigate? <laughs> oh, it's a pleasure group. A Sabrosa pleasure group congregating in cellars under the cover of night. Saturday night. Sometimes even Friday night. Or Thursday night. Sometimes the congregating doesn't even end. It carries on into our daily life. Oh, we're ambitious. We want to destroy the last vestiges of meaning. The last things people in Revishol have to hold on to. The true symbols of security. The meaning of man and woman, mother and father, their marriage. Everything will be constantly shifting and moving under our rule. The future will belong to a circus of identities just spinning around, surreal and unreal. You won't even know who you are anymore. But do you also like the razzle-dazzle of gold? Do you like parties and discos and having fun under the vibrant lights of Saturday night? Because instead of the traditional family unit, we're going to have all this razzmatazz. And mysteries, of course, too. Mysteries of sexual nature, very esoteric. And disco music and drugs. Because instead of the traditional family unit, we're going to have all this razzmatazz. You can't just get into it. You have to be born into it. Beautiful. Beautiful. That's exactly what we're looking for. Who knows, maybe you were homosexual in the past. Maybe I'll... I have to say that you do look like someone who might be part of the underground. Ooh. You have that very distinctive, I can't understand what's going on here, look. Do think about it, officer. <laughs> Absolutely wonderful. Nice. Bye -bye, but I don't have any skill points, so we're gonna leave this for later. Oh, wait, maybe we should go talk about the phasmid. Hmm. In that case, I shouldn't have left whirling in the rags. Oh well, this can come back so fun. How do I learn about the pale anyway? What the heck? Mm. Hi there. It's great to see you again. Oh, I need to talk to Lena. Oh, sweetie, I don't even know how to thank you for finding my husband and helping him out. I hope we haven't been too much trouble for you. I knew it. <laughs> I'm not surprised. It's already getting out of hand. Well, in that case, sweetie, <gasps> oh. let me give you a small token of my gratitude. S the little silvery knob holding the tie together feels... Oh, you don't want to hear about some old woman's ramblings. Ramblings? Nonsense. <laughs> Your description of the phasmid is the most precise I've ever heard. Yeah, wait till I don't give you my own. I didn't even get the size of it right. You were a child, my dear. Really. Reflexively, the lieutenant read his, his familiar notebook. Well... It was what? summer. <clears throat> I was building a racing track out of sand on the beach near a tall stand of reeds. I looked up, and one of the reeds moved. Not like a plant, but like a living thing. 
it stood up and looked at me. Its body unfolded like some antique toy. She had no fear. I didn't know this can happen, so I reached my arm and touched the thing. It felt just like a star. I tried, but I was only a child. There was mud and high water. I couldn't see it anymore. I Where did you go? Don't go. When I was speaking to Lena the first time and this uh, Inland Empire, uh, how do I put it? What is it? How, how do you call this? Line? Yes. This Inland Empire line came up. I thought it was because I was skipping the dialogue too, <laughs> too fast and the game was uh, mocking me and asking, where did you go? I'm here. I ran back home to my grandmother and asked her if reeds could walk and told her they were looking at me. <laughs> For years, it was a story I told at parties when I wanted to impress boys. We were on a date. Can you imagine? She tells me a story and it's the most detailed report. So that's how they met. This is beyond significant for them. Cool. It did, yes. Like reeds in a gust of wind. The way it moved, the color, how some of its limbs were white, like marble. If, if it weren't for Lena, I might have given up hope years ago. Our first, yes. Not all of them. There is some white coloration reported. Okay. It's hard to say how big things are when you're quite small. You're... How could she? Who so she couldn't have made it up or imagined it. That's true, yes. I'm almost certain. You trying to tell us you saw the Insul Indian Fasmid out there and... I thought it was a wonderful story, man. But I don't believe it. A child left unattended on a warm day. Children make up stories and then end up believing them. You're welcome, sweetie. And she could get up and walk right into the reeds on her own, into the mud. Surely things can't be that bad? You sense that she won't judge you, no matter what you say. You know where we are, right? That's right. And where is the whirling itself located? Yes, indeed. We are in the fine city of Revishol, yes. And, oh my, how would I even begin to tell you? Revishol, I haven't seen very many other cities personally, but everyone says so. Mm. Speaking of history, you know what year it is, yes? All I know is we are approaching the end times. That's right, dear. Now nice. splendid. Her relief is palpable. She was outside, spring rain seeps into the cracks in the walls and the cobblestone streets and into grated storm drains, all the way down into the sewers. Above ground, the first Maybells blossom. I can tell that this is taxing for you, so I'll just ask one more question. What regime are we living under? What mode of government? Well, this choice is tricky because Every time, every single time I've cho I made this choice, it wasn't right. Some kind of democracy, maybe? No, because we have the coalition and the moral interim government. I'd like to think it's the dictatorship of the... Oh, no. No. We are governed by intelligent machines. No. Phew. So, there are no right options here. Oh, sweetie. Okay. It's really not. There used to be people who thought that way. Revishol is a zone of control led by an alliance of foreign powers called the Coalition. We have almost no government of our own. Wait. And certainly no dictatorship of the proletariat. This is strange because my character already knows about Coalition. And moral intern, because last year told me about it, and I think Joyce also told me about that. But they still have cops. Oh dear. And you were doing so well. <laughs> there aren't really any cops in Revishol. Okay, but... okay. She's scared now. 
She's realized you really are brain damaged. Yeah, I am. Someone more educated in sweeping matters. No, I'm not an encyclopedia. I uh, of course. Ben. <gasps> I so there's where the thing is. I need to talk to Joyce and I need to send. Oh no. Okay. I don't know. Someone rich, maybe. But thank you, sweetie. You did make me forget. Didn't I check? Wait. Uh, who is this? Is it Gary? Always a pleasure to see an officer of the law. I mean, officers. Wait. But I... Uh... <laughs> Nothing like the gratitude of a good woman. He tries to play it cool. Remain professorial. But inside. Good. Okay. Completely empty? Yes. Surprise. Tempered with fear and trepidation. No locusts? Yes. No phasmid either? That's not ideal. But... Ideal. I love the accent. It's amazing. Just. It just means the Insulindian Phasmid is even more clever than we thought. Oh, of course. <laughs> You're dealing with a subject near and dear to their hearts. It might behove you to tread lightly. Yes, the Phantasmodea picked off the locust and... Another trip to the reeds. Of course we have. Wait, okay. Morel. He may You're right, dear. It's a f part of me. Heartfelt gratitude. Thank you, it's an honor. We should probably return to our main investigation here. This has been refreshing, but... Helping cryptozoologists isn't really a priority for our organization. Consider the way the empty trap was disturbed. As though shaken. Most likely the hands of a young... You should ask the red-headed boy. A little hooligan. Yeah. What would a child want with bags? Oh, my dear Morel. You've been an old man for too long. Kids love to torment in... Delinquents. My favorite. <laughs> oh, you've been such a dear to us. Well, I see you've got all the help you need. After this is your last chance to talk to Gary. Gary! Oh, really, Gary? Lena, I'm sorry, but you're not getting anywhere. Morel... It's been fun. Really. No, no. No need to apologize, Geary. Geary. You'd be more than helpful. <laughs> we'll helpful. have to take a rain check on that rain game check. of Sue's Rain Tea today, Sue's though. Rain Tea today, though. We're gonna follow this through. He keeps the language unemotional, but it's in there. This Hell no. I had no idea. And I'm still cross with him, to be honest. It's not like him. He's got his quirks. But quirks. dishonesty. <laughs> disloyalty. Are not Jesus. one of them. I don't know what got into him, officer. Thank you. I've just always liked animals and puzzled. He seems reluctant to talk about himself. Yes. Yes. All right. What cryptids precisely? We would have to discuss. He wants to say, but decides against it. You need to ask him about specific cryptids. Cryptids you've heard about from Lena or his friend Gary. He won't just... No offense, officer, but I'm not much of a pedagogue. Me? I'm not a people person, unless you haven't noticed. And I don't make it... Be friendly, dear. The detective really likes... Now okay. the man feels embarrassed. Time to... By all means. Never mind. What, what the hell? What the hell is going on? The hell? Where the hell? Okay. We need to go to the Octoon Kuno. Oh, and then maybe we can learn about the bail. But the issue is I have a lieutenant with me. No. Oh my god, I told you that shit is lame. Shut up, C. Now they're gonna take you to lame prison. Lame prison. She sounds like she's about to cry. Deny everything, Kuno. 
Kuno's not gonna say anything without his lawyer. There's definitely something going on here. Kuno okay. doesn't. Okay, okay. Okay. Well, uh, mm. Never mind. Well, I wanted to check that thought, but. But no. Locusts! All around you, the hisses and chirps of locusts fill the what husky army? air. The earthen floor of the shack has been shaped into mounds of now mud, it's cold. dotted with little holes for windows. Well, detective, it appears you've solved the case of the locusts for the missing locust case, which is a subcase of the imaginary <laughs> insect case. So at least that's going well. Oh, I'm not being sarcastic at all. We are making real progress here. If anything, the presence of the locust points to the opposite. But what do I know? <laughs> Use your powers of deduction. You knew the magic bug was nowhere near here. The phasmid is it. I'll let you handle the Kuno side of things. ASMR locusts. Do they even exist in real life? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, Kuro took the books, so what? So it wasn't the Phasmid. A wave of disappointment washes over you. Yeah, well, Kuno's all you got, bitch. It's not Bugtown, it's the city of locusts. Mm. Locusts aren't just bug shit. They come out of the sky like a fucking shadow. You stop! It's like they're fucking night! Local city! Night city! City of rage! The girl forces herself to watch again. The corners of her eyes twitching. Oh, Kuno, the pig wants to help you! Oh, that's how lame it is! An artist! Maybe I am an artist! Oh, that's you hear nice. that, everyone? I'm a fucking artist now! Oh my god, Kuno! He's gonna make you totally lame in, like, three seconds! Yo, fuck you, see? Kuno can be what Kuno wants to be. Kuno's his own man. Kuno's free. Kuno made himself into Kuno. Kuno can make himself into anything. Kuno can make himself into a pig if he wants. Kuno can make himself into a f <laughs> Kuno doesn't give a shit. Don't make yourself into a pig, Kuno. You'll have to take me away. In it. You hear snow melting, dripping from the eaves. Someone closing a window. So that's what this is about. Hmm. Oh. Without a word, she did for once. The boy is lost for words. He turns completely red now. Use this momentary confusion to take control of the situation. Hmm. I don't give a shit. I don't need the locusts anyway. The girl's face appears again above the fence, just long enough to make eye contact with Kuno. So there is no way of this. It don't mean anything. It pig. You really shouldn't have fucked with Kuno City. Now it's all fucking lame. Kuno's gonna let the fucking locusts die. No, okay. The fuck are they trying to catch anyway? Huh. He recognizes the name. Bitches think Kuno doesn't know shit. The fuck out of here. There's silence between the two children. Okay. Eh. Uh, so this is kind of awkward.
Hello, officer. So it was just a child. Thank you for telling us. Something is secretly gnawing at her confidence. It's not this Kuno kid, or the missing locust. Yeah, you're right. We just need to restock the empty trap. Then we'll need to inspect the traps one more time. <coughs> oh no. He has a 38 degree fever. Oh, that's His a lot. His resilience has given way. Darling, I told you to take it easy. You're right, you're right. We can come back next season when it's warmer. We are getting really carried away with this. Aren't Shut we? up, Giff. Fine, it's better than having these people get pneumonia on the coast. But after this... Really? It's too much. What Morel means is... He's a fresh track to locals. slide right down the funnel. And thank you again. Wow. Co-discovery. Yes. You'd be famous. Yes. You'd show them all. This does tingle the pleasure center. This would show them all. We need to get you on that list of discoverers. No question about that. That's nice. So now apparently I can learn something about the pale, but since Kim is around, maybe... Maybe I can't, but also maybe I still can. Maybe I would need to read some books to make him leave. Just to pass the time, you know. You know, you know. Did I finish anything and everything else? Um, I wanted to make that. Um, what? No, I'm, I'm skipping. Am I skipping? Yes, yes I am. I will try another way around this time. Without the gun. But maybe we will still get the gun. <clears throat> we don't know. Jules! Tell me. Oh, I forgot about the trap. You're back. This reality. Ah, yes. The episode. Sounds like an acute case of encephalopathy, now that I think of it. Don't be faith, madame. He functions perfectly well. He only needs a low down on all of reality. We may be here a while, then. Ask away, officer. All right, you're in. Finally! The first one. You'll appear worldly. We're in Martinez, baby. A casual term of endearment popular among the 50-plus crowd. <laughs> she refers to your corresponding ages. Thank you, Martinez logic. is a district of Revachol. Uh, you would be excused for not knowing about it. Unimportant, they say. Forgotten, even. Shelled to smithereens during the revolution. It has its charms, just not this time of year. It's not really a sea, it's the Bay of Revachol. Yes, we're on an island. Okay. Luke War. I'm not a good ambassador. I've only been here once before. Well, my hands started As a teenager. Oh, no. Not a lot has changed. <clears throat> This place used to be a province, Caillou, as you already know. It is clear this pebble is of enormous value to her. I would be happy to. What is a propos- We're in Martinet. Martinet, you would okay, be wait. excused for not knowing. Revachol? Revachol is what you call the Great Cup. As if it's self-explanatory. History, detective. They built this city to re the nations of the Occident. Or migrant okay. workers from Seb in the DeLorean century. Okay. They say it's where the terrible questions of our time will be answered. The tensions are highest, by that I mean, conflicts. We are standing on a fertile, self-sufficient island able to sustain up to 200 million people. In the middle of the Insulindic Ocean, the world's connective tissue. It's where the money is. Oh, we're quite a way off. About 
A sparkle of lights on the horizon. 22 kilometers from the center of the world. Hmm. That soldering iron it's is the bank far. of the world building. Silence. The water. The light. There is no recognition. Only the... Ooh. She observes yes. the eyes scanning the horizon. Finally! Then break. This is one thought you need to complete. Where are you? Hmm. Was there something else you wanted to know? This has been informative. Thank you, ma'am. I'm sure my memory impaired partner ha Might I suggest not asking them all right now? Ma'am, Monsieur will be here later too. Absolutely. My commitment here is long term. Oh, of course not. You are already diligent for getting this far. And diligent boys remember where they left off. Tell, tell, tell that when my, when you're, when you're... <laughs> Indeed. I'm always at your service. It's a neurological disorder caused by a lack of vitamin B in the brain. Magnesium! Symptoms include a retrograde amnesia. No? It's quite no. serious. She conveys it in short, cold bursts, in case he goes down later, souring the entire pool. It's not just me, detective. All of Martinez has placed its chips on. Well, it's either bariatric surgery or long-term alcohol use. Oh. <laughs> that seems... What this boils down to is, this reality thing is stupid. Blow this joint. Wait, wait. This reality thing is the only game in town it's probably in your interest not to blow it she stares at you head okay. tilted to the side glad to have been of assistance the little bad so now we can continue all this how much time does oh no i've got the homosexual underground in jamais vu three hours eight hours Fuck. Do I need to? Okay. Also, I've seen a video about making uh, the thought cabinet, <laughs> mm. and one of the developers. Or I don't really. I don't know. Uh, uh, um, I don't know who is that guy and what what exactly was he doing. But nevertheless, that guy told that. Uh, I thought cabinet was something that nearly ruined the game after a long f time of making it. <gasps> we haven't talked to these guys. Oh, that's going to be fun. This is going to be fucking fun. Hey, tequila. What? Good to see you. How's business? How's the whole reality situation treating you? So what's happening? Yeah, tequila sunset. How are the um, high concept reality based adventures proceeding? Good. These people know your true name. What? Looks like it has preceded you, Mr. Sunset. More on that later. Mr. Sunset. That's harsh. I'm like, Three or maybe four years into mine. Wait, no. Make it five. Things aren't going super well for Idiot Doom Spiral either. Haven't found those keys yet. Haven't won that great piece of ass back. No word from my... This guy's your buddy, buddy. Mm -hmm. You feel it immediately. You belong to an organization. Can't really remember seeing any women after... It's a touchy topic. He hasn't got laid in ages. Okay. We are saving the world. Please! Please don't call. Okay, we're drinking. <laughs> we're drinking alcohol. Same. That's what we're doing. I tried to save the world once, a long time ago, with enterprise, creativity, and willpower. But that didn't work out. So now, it's a pirate's life for me. It's you. Your tequila sunset. We've met before. Don't you remember? Maybe. You look like you want to know how Tequila Sunset. Tequila. Tequila Sunset. Something ominous there. You think you feel bad now? Wait till you've heard. No, no. You need 
the wisdom. Oh, okay. Mm hmm. Let me take a sip to moisten up my cords. Tequila Sunset rolled into Martinez last Friday. And by Tequila Sunset, I mean you. The man, the myth. Hey, let's not jump ahead of ourselves. This is your story. Stop it. You got here on Friday to solve a case, hoping to be the early bird who gets the worm. And by the worm, I mean the buzz. Because as far as I know, all you did was get pissed drunk. Word on the street is you went around the local hostel telling people that you're a police officer and that it would be really fucked up if you shot yourself in the head right in front of them. That's oh. pretty high concept. Oh yeah, that's totally <clears throat> your style. The lieutenant's brow is furrowed. He's listening as casually as he can. It was a late Saturday night when we, the Union of Marabund Alcoholics, were getting our drink on. Nothing remarkable about this, we get our drink on 24-7. Makes everything warm and glowy. I trust you know that one moment we hear the sound of a motor carriage revving up somewhere on the plaza, followed by a series of dings and bangs. Do you remember the sound of wood cracking? The billboard? Maybe? Naturally, loud noises pique the interest of anybody owning a pair of ears. That's just the reality we're in. Anyway, there was a brief silence. A gasp of silence, if you will. Followed by a real commotion. We heard the carriage careening towards the coast. It tops sounded like someone jumped the canal. <laughs> we grabbed our brewskis and rushed to the jetty. Never underestimate the speed of an alcoholic. Three men are standing on a wooden platform extending out from the shore of a dilapidated fishing village. Their cheeks red, spirits high, bears in hand. What we saw was a sight to behold. A beat up police carriage containing you. Right there on the beach, you rev the engine and screamed at the top of your lungs, the time hath come. <laughs> so naturally, being the curious cat I am, I asked what time hath come. To which you replied, The time hath come for Tequila Sunset, the end of all things. Yeah, looms. <laughs> Why not? Then you jammed the pedal and plowed right off the jetty and through the ice. Okay. The muscles in your right leg this tense is up. Fun. We ran towards the ice whilst you crawled your way out, miraculously unhurt, covered in seaweed and shit. When we finally got there, you were sitting on the beach crying. You said that your badge and uniform were in the car. Recognizing a brother in need, we offered our- What else was there to do? Oh, yeah. Thank you, brothers. We asked about the whole tequila sunset thing, and you told us it was your name now, and insisted that we all call you that from then on. Oh, no. Oh, no, I'm not wearing the horrific necktie, so that's why- wait, or am I? I think you said that you were the event. No. And that you would smash the looms of reality. Yeah. I knew I'd heard that looms line before. No, that's just what your mother called you. Ours. It was an all-night drinkathon. How they're beautiful and also whores and so on. How one of them fucked you real bad. No. After a short while, you crossed the event horizon, looked sullen, got up. Wow, that's quite a story. Yeah, I bet tequila's a fucking legend around. If you only knew. <laughs> you were pretty vague about it, but you kept saying you got- Please, don't open that door. No one's fucked me. Abigail. <laughs> it seemed pretty painful, to be honest with you. Beside your gun and your badge, you said something about your- In retrospect, I guess you lost your motor carriage too? That's a big one. You told us that they were a bunch of fucking losers whose main interest was cramping your style. It's more like you were cramping theirs. No specifics hmm. though. It was- Yeah, you said it was no biggie and that you'd solve it in no time. No. And that you didn't need anyone to do it. You're doing it solo now. A lot of cops go solo and hermit once they reach that level of alcoholism. Oh, so that's like a normal practice to do. Why? He's not meant as a joke. <clears throat> He's sorry for the hermit cop. 
Oh, well, let him be sorry for himself. Yeah, you kept talking about how the coal mine owners were fucking us all over, just like... I didn't agree with you, by the way. The spectral hand of the market makes sure everyone gets exactly what they deserve. Ew! Fucking liberal piece of shit. You kept apologizing for being such a bad cop and for the damage you inflicted <laughs> on everyone around you. You also kept pausing to knock the heel of your hand against your temples, saying, stupid, stupid, stupid. Well, I am stupid. One sec. It's a hard thing for a man to confront his past. whoop de doo whoop So now -doo. I'm a fucking story. It depends, really. The gleam in his up. I don't want it, man. I need it. So, have you got anything for good old idiot Doom Spiral? A bottle for a story. Seems fair to me. Not much, but it will do. Hey, Spiral Boy, you gonna share that? Don't call Abigail! Shut up, guys. I'm telling a story here. This is a funny story, actually. I'm gonna take a break and get back to you. Something happened to you. Something happened to me, too. My actual name is George. But around here, you already know. I was once a reasonably high net worth individual, mm. a founder slash junior partner at a high concept creative services agency. When my story begins, I had just landed a major contract with an insurance firm. I used the profits from my agency to finance what I called a cultural incubator. I developed the paradigm, worked within the paradigm, but the burden of leadership weighed heavily on me. So I went jogging every so often to keep myself sane. 22 full-time employees, an all-star team, a potentially historical set of individuals. Worrying about them often kept me up well into the morning hours. It did. <clears throat> With my trusty Sansarik tracksuit, I felt like I could conquer the world. But now, dreams are worn thin, much like my tracksuit. One day I left on my evening run. As you may know, it's impossible to clear your head when you're distracted by the sound of keys jangling in your pockets. His eyes are clouded. His dilated blood vessels encircling his irises like stinging brambles. So I removed the key ring and put the keys for the front gate and the apartment into different pockets. To stop the jangling, you see. At least, that was the plan. I was halfway done with my usual lap when it started to rain. The reality situation became very wet, very quickly. Wet, okay? It was <laughs> raining really hard. I made my way back home and discovered that I didn't have the key to the front gate. I'd mixed it up with the key to the letterbox. Naturally, the situation required me to climb over the gate, which I did. There was no climbing down because I slipped and landed on my ass. Ouch, indeed. Reality was looking rather grim just then. Me lying on my ass in a mud pit in the middle of a heavy shower. But when life knocked me down, I always got up. So I made my way across the yard. Standing in front of my apartment door, fumbling with my pockets, I realized that I'd also forgotten my apartment key. I wish I were, Tequila. I wish I were. Instead of my apartment key, I'd taken the key to the office. I rang my neighbor's buzzers. It was late, and most of them didn't even answer. Those who did assumed I was trying to sell them something and hung up before I could even explain the situation. People are naturally wary of ad men, you see? One moment someone chats you up, five minutes later you've bought a box of edible lingerie and a strap-on. I don't begrudge them, especially since I was known to be... one of the best. Heavy is the head that wears the crown. 
Just then, I experienced a moment of clarity. I still had the key to my office. But when I reached my office, I remembered that I'd asked one of my producers to change the locks that day. And since I hired only the best, he'd already done... Anyway, long story short, life spiraled out of control. I haven't gotten into my apartment for years, and my girlfriend left me because she didn't want to date a homeless man. The company... well, you see where I'm going with this. He pinches his thigh as if to check. So, now you've heard my tragic tale. What do you think? Tequila, I've thought about this series of events for a long time. If there was anything else to it, I would have thought of it by now. Why didn't you go to the authorities? Well, at one point they came to me, but, you know, I, I didn't have any ID on me. So they tossed me in jail for two days. I can't say it increased my faith in the RCM. No offense, gentlemen. The hobo lifestyle definitely has some perks. Not having to pay rent, first and foremost. Not being responsible for 20 other people is nice, too. But that charm wears off pretty quickly. Before you know it, you're wearing a shit-stained tracksuit and spending your days picking tear. Good fucking question, Tequila. If I knew the answer, you think I'd be hanging out on a beach in this formerly premium but now extremely dirty two-piece Lycra tracksuit? I used to own my reality situation. Now I can't hang on to anything. Just last week I stole this nice new jacket, but then I lost it too. You of all people should empathize with this. Perhaps this lost jacket is something you could help with? Yeah. Tequila, it's a verifiable tragedy. It was practically brand new. Sure, it didn't really go with my Lycra threads, but it did itch a lot less. Say, you're a detective, right? Hmm. Yeah, it was the one I found. Nah, this isn't it. Found? That's medium concept stuff. Totally not my style. No fucking way. Idiot Doom Spiral never forgets a piece of premium menswear. Hey, Doom Spiral, ain't that the jacket you stole the other week? Not on your fucking life, Rosemary. What's wrong with you people? Like I'd be caught dead wearing Falm, like some low-concept bicycle courier. Tell you what, Tequila, why don't you just hang on to that one? No. I'll get another jacket. At least you got a nice jacket for your troubles. You too, Tequila Sunset. Okay, let's step aside for a second. Okay. I've been meaning to have a little chat with you about your sense of style. Oh, this is getting serious. It's, well, a little eclectic, don't you think? How would you even describe what you're wearing? <laughs> well, I can't say it doesn't fit you. Still, you might try branching out a little. You know the expression, the clothes make the man. The right outfit in the right situation can make all the difference in the world. Let's not get ahead of ourselves, detective. A warm smile. <laughs> anyway, we should probably get back to the case. Let's go. I always wondered why the hell does this dialogue even appear? Wait, didn't uh, that guy took... No, he didn't. Well, he's an idiot because now I can wear it. What's next? Maybe we could talk to Joyce a little bit. Until Kim says that I need to do that in my own time. Lessons in basic reality. These are unimportant times, Detective. You and I were born after the dust had settled. A thousandth of a second too late for the big time. The smile of a predator. No doubt what she's got in mind. All men are predators, dear. Mm -hmm. Nothing much to be done about that. It's all a matter of where you get to file your teeth. The revolution. It's quite easy. 
Every hundred years or so, our species gets together to decide what's next, who gets shot in the head, and who gets the mineral rights. It's a the turn of the century revolution. <laughs> Don't the revolution began in 02 on the Isola of Grad. It wasn't a who, but a what. A it made people overthrow their governments. Of course not. It was a highly infectious microorganism that destroyed brain tissue. The act from Revachol okay. and Grad? Not far. The world managed to cauterize itself. Mazov's government was overthrown in 08, and the coalition crushed the Revachol commune two years later. Why? You and I, officer. Our lives in the zone of control. Mm. Something tells you her life and yours are not that similar. No doubt. But we share the same time and position on the planet's crust. Modernity. Mm -hmm. They develop the marvels of the inter communication. Telematic milieus, radiation, colored plastics. 51 minus 8 equals 43. Time flies. The 20s saw a decade of urban war, west of the river leveled, offshore platforms in flames. Still, it's regarded as an improvement on what came before. 08 to 19 was simply hell. They wrote so much story behind this. I mean, this is mentioned in about five dialogues that I've encountered in the game. But still, it's so much work. The 30s? Things settled down in the 30s. Revachol East transformed itself into the world's largest tax haven with the international community's blessing. For the first time in a long time, it seemed like things were going somewhere. So the moralists took over the government, okay, but... Oh, what also I'd want to say is that the revolution uh, Joyce is talking about is mentioned in other conversations, but each of the conversations I'm having with people who know about the revolution have their own point of view and they're all different. So, for example, Joyce is a rich woman that knows some things about the life and, and all that. And also, I, one, I'm 100% sure that I've been talking with an older guy, the guy who survived the revolution, and he was a communist. So he has a um, like, totally different view of what happened. That's interesting. No. It was a market mirage fueled by cocaine and quantitative easing. The 40s dispelled it like a cold splash. Welcome to reality, baby. From the looks of it, the 50s haven't been much better for the zone of control. You can see it in her eyes. I've no right to be dissatisfied. This shirt is Barbara Muscova, this raincoat is impervious to rain and is guaranteed for a hundred years. We could have had so much more. Every one of us. If only we played it right. Why, of course. We're talking Duke Out Central. No, I would say the apes were... neutral. I don't know about that. Those would be the communists. Mm -hmm. Generally speaking, 40 million people got shot in the head during the World Revolution. But the communists, they all got shot in the head. Oh, I wouldn't be so sure about that. She's not gloating. It's a relieved celebration. Oh, dear. Oh, and You're the so wrong. too. They shot them well. Did they ever? Before they got shot themselves, they shot two million people. Yes, the Red Deluge. The Insulindian Deluge, they call Yes, an acute thymine deficiency can be exacerbated by alcoholism. Oh, lots of people. Even the king got shot in the head, or thrown beneath a horse, or drowned. Accounts differ. It the real king abdicated and lived out a long and productive life as a venture capitalist in Grad. I prefer the term risk averse. King Guillaume was nobody's fool. He could smell a PR disaster brewing. So he got out alive, and his nephew, him and tens of thousands of his wonderfully fascist kingsmen. Hmm. 
the Liberals got the mineral rights. And by mineral rights, I mean everything. They didn't win so much as survive. We were the last ones standing when the war ended. We? She's one of them. Of course. To foreign intervention. The Coalition. Those people really took the mineral rights. Wait. The Coalition of Nations. Grad, Mesk, Vesper, Messina, Oranje, and Sieur Le Clay. The armed center of the world. They landed here and ended the revolution. It was the moralist thing to do. So they're like basically colonizers of some sort. There is bitterness in her voice, tempered with understanding. She is critical. The moralists believe in keeping everything exactly the way it is. They believe in mineral rights, at least not in the same manner and volume as the others do. They are the long-standing provisional rulers of Revachol now. This is their zone of control. They embolden the RCM with crumbs of the same law they took. Technically speaking, you are a moralist. Of course. Not easy to be moderate about head shooting in your line of work. Rooty tooty, pointy shooty. <laughs> That's the way of history. Good question. What would you have done diff- No, her first. And I asked you, past less detective of the citizens' militia, what insight has acute encephalopathy given to you? Here's some wisdom, lady. Say the deaf thing. What? Uh... A cold creeps up your spine, reaching its tendrils up your neck, toward the back of your head. So a quarter of humanity simply lost their minds. And how would you stop a prion? A complex folding protein, unlife, with the technology 50 years ago. Hmm. The wind stops, and for a moment, there's silence. The charge dissipates into the dark water. A dog barks. A gunshot echoes off the walls of some distant building. There is peace in the heart. Good hygiene. Really. A very moderate solution to an extreme problem. It's those sort of half measures that doomed the authorities in Grad. Maybe it wasn't half measures. Maybe they didn't imply them all the way. Because actually some hygiene and social care and all that and research programs. I mean, if you could apply this to the world we live in, it would make someone's life better. I mean, I have... Um, well, I have some sort of access to all those things. And I'm grateful for that. I mean... When they failed to step up, Marzorf and his party stepped in. In this particular case, maybe a more robust state response might have been appropriate. <clears throat> Opinions expressed here do not reflect the official position of the RCM. Sure. And what is your official position? My position, ma'am? My parents got ripped to shreds in the revolution. I would have gone the same way. I was saved by being two years old. That's my position. The abattoir. Understandable. They are what they are, anyway. Enough sentimental. Not so fast. Who is she in all this? Ask her who she is. She owes you an answer. Hmm. She won't maneuver her way out of this one. I am the vilest of the vile. A traitor. I am an ultra. She raises the corner of her mouth. Ultra smiling, who? Revealing a canine. Ultra liberal? It's sharp. Yes. Ah, yes. I am the nether creature of the Forbidden Swamp. I pushed the king under a shit wagon and betrayed the revolution. I can see you thought we'd gone extinct. After all, 
No sane person identifies as an ultra liberal anymore. Not in broad uh, daylight. Sure. You're a centrist at heart. A real moralist, no? No, I'm not. Tell me, now that I've uncoiled myself, do you find me frightening? In her green eyes, you see a mixture of truth and self satire. Decade, forgive her, but only because you like pearlescent teeth and those light green eyes. A devil, who being of great charm and guile, sneaketh into the homes of the godly. Beneath her waterproof raincoat and silk shirt is a body embalmed <laughs> in numb twelve perfume. Steal, kill, and destroy. That they say we've been doing for over four decades now. Perhaps regrettably. I've had my fill for this century. Hmm. In any case, I'm glad we can remain collegial despite my scaly bulk. When the dust settled, the Liberals were the only ones left to clean up the mess, by virtue of their survival. With due respect to our overlords, the eternal caretaker government that keeps Martinez a monument to the efficacy of its artillery. While a gentle wind sweeps the streets in the rebuilt east, light drizzle washing it clean, lights go up and motor carriages circulate. The tr I would not have relinquished sovereignty to the coalition. Not here in Martinez. And not in the Stella Maris or Delta Beachheads either. She realizes her small, cold fists are clenched. Then for my daughters, we had an obligation to defend our sovereignty. We should have burned the whole Isola down rather than let them have it. Dark orange flames reflect in her green eyes. An oil fire on the ocean. Perhaps. My intellectual vanity will be my undoing. You're no dummy yourself. And the crown on your head as you lay in the casket. Yes, I suppose I am. Seditious talk, man. Yes. Whatever else I am. A bird? <laughs> a Svenicid? A flightless bird of the polar region? Of course you're not, my dear. I'm just terrible at guessing games. This place is an unmarked micro-settlement on the coast of Martinez. It's lovely, really. I'm thinking of buying it. Yes, so I can spite Everard and spoil his plans for this place. I'm a petty person, I admit. Don't worry, I'll never get around to it. The information you pass to me will remain confidential. Let's get back to reality, shall we? Glad to have been of assistance, the little... I have no shame. Oh wait, what? What? What's, What's happening? this? We're getting reports of normal, <gasps> no way. reasonable, temperate, political no opinions way. somewhere in Martinez. It's also about that, but it's also more. Perhaps it's the hangover. Perhaps it's a temporary surge of serotonin. But something tells you it's time to become a citizen of the kingdom of conscience. Mm. That's a pity. Real democracy was oh, just around course. the corner for Rivershaw. All the leading citizens are waiting there, without you. Waiting for how long exactly? Oh wait, don't tell me. Eternity? You're back. More lessons in basic reality? Yes. Oh wait. My favorite part Maybe of I the can day. Boost it. Go wait. ahead. I'll as, glad as, to have been of assistance. As, as the corpse. I have some clothes, you know. Oh. Okay, never mind. Um. So it's only the cloaks. I wasn't wearing my horrific necktie. Oh my god. I thought I was, but I wasn't. Kind of sucks. You're back. More lessons in basic reality? Yeah. Six kilometers southwest in the Valley of Dogs, junior officer Chad Tilbrook takes Chad. aim at a rabid black dog licking its wounds in the grass. To his left, his partner, Emil Mullins, whispers, You heard what happened to Tequila Sunset in Martinez? Yes, he lost his mind, Tilbrook answers. 
fingers on the trigger. Don't worry, ML. He pulls it out slowly. Slowly now. He'll find it again. We always do. You? You're an officer of the RCM. It stands for Revachol Citizens Militia. Wow, well, the way she says militia is just... Oh my god. Nothing more nor less than the de facto law enforcement body of post-revolutionary Revachol, detective. Yes, we are the Revachol Citizens Militia. We are. Yes, that means not de jure. The RCM acts in what is poetically called the Twilight of International Law, both at the behest of the coalition government and to its chagrin. The RCM's responsibilities are defined by the Emergency, Wayfarer and Aliments Acts, three pieces of legislation keeping the city... All three are good to know when we are out policing. There's nothing basic about your role, Detective. It's true that the RCM keeps everything the way our seemingly permanent provisional rulers like it. Yet, on the other hand, I know these people. I deal with them daily. The post-revolutionary decade was a disaster for the coalition government. Revachol in the 20s was hell, especially on the west side of the river. Gang warfare, a botched pride. They called it the international zone because mm. no nation wanted to claim responsibility. The Kinda RCM funny. restored peace where the coalition failed. A true blue citizen's initiative. They will never forgive you. That's somewhat of an exaggeration. In reality, ours is a mutually beneficial arrangement. Revacholians get to keep the peace in Revachol, and the coalition doesn't have to worry about it. <laughs> anyway, sorry to intrude. Yes, Lieutenant. Permit me to conclude with this. Who you are, to me, is the police. And if those authorities drink so hard, they need help recalling nothing more nor less than the dip. Yes. Okay, sorry. We yes. Um, Permit me to. And if those authorities drink so. Glad okay. to have been of assistance. The little. I've also noticed one little, um, you know, kind of annoying thing about this game is that. I'm not sure if. Uh, Maybe, I hope someone has noticed this before I did, but... Um, as far as I can tell about what I've seen in the game, only women are explaining stuff to you. I mean, such global stuff like Joyce just did, or... Wait, who else was it? It was the girl in the Freed, which... She doesn't like to speak a lot. The locusts aren't doing all too well. Wait, I need to refill the trap. Which one was the last one? The one near... Uh, I think we need to check all of them. Oh, it sucks. Oh, I see the locusts. Okay, we need to go back. Um, also, there was... Um, 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 um. Cindy kind of talks a lot. Then Suna, the programmer. Like, uh, I'm not sure there are like people, the men in the game, who explain basic stuff that you are expected to know already. Although there was this guy, the Sunday friend. Even Kim. He must like me. <laughs> I mean, he's working with me. Was it this one? The locust. Okay, no, it wasn't. How surprising. Oh, no, wait. It's here? Yeah. I'm just surprised how much work each game I have ever played contains. It's immaculate. Starting with conversations, with the skill system, with even with the weapons. We don't have weapons here, but nevertheless I've played other games that do have weapons and they are all different and they have like... Can you see this? We can check out 
It's so much text. There's so much things written. Oh my god. Look at this. I am I am just shocked because there are 20 24 24 skills and the amount of text written here it's unique. I myself also I work and I write text but this and I'm not even reading it right now. Also this has some some explanations. Oh my god, just what the what? These all these things the thoughts Jesus Oh maybe I should where is it? I want I want the homosexual underground. If this game is gonna define me, it should define me correctly. Yes, thank you. And again, like, how much time did people spend on this? What is here? What, what's here? Did I come there? Come in there. I don't remember. We'll see. <sighs> it's kind of late. The game is insulting me about picking up the old postcards. What the fuck? Like, it's the only thing I can loot. It's not like Fallout or The Outer Worlds or Fry or any other game where you loot the enemies that you kill. The only enemy in Disco Elysium is the physical realm. And the only thing I can do about it is just rob places pick pick up some you know some money or some things that are just scattered around it's literally the only thing i can do the trap stands empty amongst the reeds powdered with snow no insect sounds or movement around only the reeds melancholy rustling fantastic <laughs> the locusts dazed from being transported. They're not really going to get the chance to get comfortable. Good. Now that's done. When do you think we will return to our impending apocalypse of a murder investigation? Don't answer that. It was a rhetorical. He doesn't want to. But if there is one more cryptozoological runaround, he must force the investigation back on track. Okay. So long story short, what what exactly are we doing here? So I have it's day four, so it's almost Z day, you know, of um, things going south. So it's basically yeah, the next day it's gonna go go fucked up. I still don't want to make anything to help Everard, so... Hmm. Let's go see. I'm just, I'm just curious if the means to find Ruby are available right now, because... You know. The remaining windows rattle from a strong gust of wind. They're covered in a thick layer of grime. Dripping water falls from a high place. All you can see... No. I won't even try. You know, I had a partner once. They called him Eyes, because he had to show me things. It's that bad. This partner of his, Eyes, things didn't end well. It saddens him to say his name. Don't even ask. No. Well, I empathize as much as I can, but... Just... You see oh. a once bright mural towering above you. The signage has peeled off over the years, but you can still make out Feld Electrical R and D. Wait, uh. A slogan used to intertwine with. Looks like tomorrow never came. Above the mural, 
a collapsed roof, broken windows set in walls that are cracking and will soon also fall, and the coastal breeze rustling and sighing in the remains of the edifice. There's something in the wind. Sometimes the only way to go forward is to fail first. Mm -hmm. Fell chicken coming. Indeed. Somehow you knew it was here. An urban ruin gutted by looters that you felt it before when it rained in Martinez and you felt the cold of the rain. The feeling persists. It has been in you ever since. Maybe we could, you know, ask the man who's pointing at the building. Great idea. In there? She could. Or she could be in the identical room over there, or in that boat shack. Why single out this one building? Fuck you, logic. Even though you're sure you succeeded, all is quiet. There is no cold hand brushing against your forehead. No rustle in the reeds. The wind has died down. The ruin in front of you is silent as a tomb. Trying to talk to the wind, the city, whatever you thought would happen did not. And now you're just standing there in the pale of the morning with your hands fallen to your side. Is trying to talk to the city something you've done before? Yeah. Is it in your secret repertoire? A trick for when you're out of ideas? A prayer of sorts to Rivershaw. How do we? I was really hoping she'd be in the village. <sighs> okay. She's probably north of the village, and this place is a peninsula. We already scanned most of the outdoor areas on our wild cryptid hunt. <laughs> we have an understanding of the geography, at least. And then there's the church. We've already searched that and can rule it out. I know it doesn't feel like progress, but exclusion is a step too. Anyway, we do it the old-fashioned way, sector by sector. Go over the whole peninsula, ask the locals, enter the places where we can enter first. Like we then, if we're desperate, we can look where we can't enter. Bankers, tomb drainage, this place, I'm sure it won't come to that. Walk the coast, the old boardwalk, the reeds. You can always come back here and talk to the wind again. Look where it already got you. This is kind of strange, because I thought that the tribunal comes right after the I... The bright mural oh, towers sorry. above you saying suddenly there's a sigh carried on the molecules around you moving flowing from high pressure to low pressure like that of a woman emptying her lungs she wraps the collapsing stone box in front of you in her breath flowing through it in through the collapsed roof mm. flowing down a concrete staircase to the basement sweeping away footprints in the dust on the stairs and then the beach below the boardwalk, its winding tunnels, a whisper away. She's down there. Okay, why? So, how do we get in there? The doors were on the collapsed side of this building. They're gone, basically. Perhaps you can climb them. <laughs> we are not climbing anything. I'm 43 years old. And, and I'm 42. To 70. There has to be a way to use brute force. Climbing sounds unsafe. Brute force is safe. Look around and find something to break if the ladder fails. Okay, so... Oh, what is that? It's a fucking... Uh, I think I may get back to this safe because... Well, we will see. I want to teleport. A rusty ladder leads Do to... Do you have a dream of teleporting? Some of the rungs are yeah. That doesn't look good. The distances between the remaining rungs are rather wide. In addition, the first rung is going to be tough to reach. Mm -hmm. It's what? Three meters above the ground? And you're 180? Okay, but still, the roof is collapsing and the wind gets pretty brutal up there. Astral projection. Oh, nice. open-minded about this. Teleportation is not a thing. Okay, let's say teleportation is a thing. Wouldn't you need some kind of scientific apparatus to create a teleportation field? You can't oh? just do it without apparatus. What are they talking about? 
Teleportation, Mikael. It's generally thought impossible. Fuck you, Trent. Oh yes, it could hurt. He is restraining himself from using a parental tone with you right now. <laughs> is he restraining himself? That sounded just like my mom. I don't know about you, but you know. Savoir fair. Now I have minus two because of my fancy clothes. Fuck off pants. I'm gonna climb up like this. Do I have literally anything that would boost my uh, possibility, my ability to jump, to teleport? Oh, nice. Uh, maybe I should put some pants on. Maybe even more of these pants. I don't like the head also. Um, where's the dick mullen head? Yeah. Look smart. Very nice. Mm. These are some wonderfully regular pants. Not too tight. Not too loose. Moderate in every sense. You blend right in at some pleasant dinner party. I was wondering if I choose the second option, would I rip the pants off me? Let's hope no one saw you wearing those outrageously regular, almost moralist pants. No! Where are they? <laughs> they were the only pants that didn't... Um... Fuck. Okay, okay. Who wears jeans with this? With this, what do you call this? The coat? The hell? Should I? Should I? I just need to put this one on. Yeah. So I have this jacket now. I mean, I made I made it myself, so it's it doesn't look the same, of course, because I don't like the zipper here. But I have "fuck the world" written on my back. You finally made it, haven't you? People point fingers at you and whisper to each other when you pass by. Where did that man get such a cool jacket? Did he receive it upon graduating the Ecole Normale Supérieure de Badassery? <laughs> dangerous? Did he receive it upon graduating the Ecole Normale Supérieure de Badassery? Oh my god, who made this? This is fucking genius. Danger to myself. Oh no, believe me. It will be everyone else who's uncomfortable with it. You're safe. No one dares say a word unless they're like from your station and coming to judge you. <gasps> no what way. Are the chances of that happening. I just want to get back to. Okay, never mind. How much is the responsibility? 42%? Boost. Well, that's not good enough for me. The rusty ladder leads. I want to fail. On yes. second thought. Maybe teleportation isn't a thing. No. Because you're just standing there squeezing your buttocks and <laughs> nothing is happening. Teleportation apparatus? I don't remember mentioning anything about teleportation apparatus. Please don't try to climb the building. We'll get in another way. Okay. Good thing I have a save. Didn't you? Did you expect me not to say that? I know what I'm doing. The rusty ladder leads to the rooftop. All you need to do is close your eyes and concentrate. This is so fucking funny. Darkness enfolds you. You can feel the distance between the bench and the first rung of the ladder. All you need to is zoot zap. <gasps> Crinkle! It's like magic. You feel yourself disappear. Your atoms fading out of existence. Oh my god, I can't believe it. Bam! You find yourself on the roof, having mastered the art of physical displacement. You know, for the record, you didn't teleport there. You just climbed the ladder with your eyes closed. Are you serious? The wind at the top of the building You're just starts jealous. howling loudly. Bl Never mind. Find a way to let me in when you get inside. Ah, <sighs> don't go adventuring with a... Okay, yeah, he's, he's kind of right. I remember... 
I was like uh, passing this uh, quest and I went to confront Ruby alone and I died which is kind of strange I can't say that the conversation with Ruby is somehow better when Kim is around but you know I don't know, I never know a little strange postcards what's the point of postcards uh, I can sell them I think in the pawn shop they cost like one real for one for one postcard or something there are so many questions I want to ask the developer team like too much you should fucking yeah take off my flashlight <laughs> oh I see Kim yeah okay I'm just gonna investigate you know I am just very curious that after the tribunal It was like um, that's 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 another thing, you know. I should let Kim in. Two rusty metal plates that slide apart. Four. What do you mean? Who is there? <laughs> it's me, Kim. Stop playing around and help me get this door open. What? <laughs> He's so offended. What the do you doors mean? Who's seem there? to be on rails. Your but fucking they've mom. Jammed. You grab a side and put some strength into prying it. Huh. I hope no one dangerous heard that. After you climbed up to the roof, you mean? There's a maintenance. Climbed up to the, the I was I it's teleported. To a drink He's quite proud of himself. Yeah, okay. At least now we have an exit. So let's get going. It's time to investigate these passages. Investigate. Oh, I have my wine going right here. Oh, that's nice. A mustachioed and mutton chopped man, amateurishly depicted. Years worth of dust is shaken off. The full head of hair matched by an ample mustache and sideburns. Look at someone crouches, heels digging into wet sand. Hands sweep across the sand, grain stick into the frayed skin of the fingertips. An old man sits on a slab of concrete and taps his fingers against the glass of a scope. You shudder. Oh. Yes, I can see that. Looks like some communists were hiding out here. Did half a century? This was probably part of the network of defense posts the communards built against the amphibious landing. I think the purpose of this bunker was to produce propaganda. It would have had radio equipment by then. We have found a lot of those lately. I guess what most people think of as history tends to linger in random neighborhoods. Martinez being what it is, no one has gone through the trouble of cleaning out the old bunkers. I won't stand in your way, but only after we are through with this case. <laughs> Millions of depictions of Mazo. You mean like Ruby? No. Okay, okay. So, oh. Could this have been the killer's hideout? And this narrow window, the point of origin of the sh This does look like an embrasure, a slit made for sh Outside the window, the day is clear. And it's a great place to hide. And Mazovianism and murder are certainly not mutually exclusive. But there hasn't been anyone here in ages. Indeed. No one could get a clear view. Yeah. Well, at least we've been thorough. I like thorough. Oh. The lieutenant's voice betrays a slight disappointment, which he glosses over by reasserting control. In fact, I think we're done with this bunker. 
after you, officer. Wait. Are we? This is... this is strange. Because if I'm gonna have... the confrontation with Ruby right now... The pale emitter! There it is again. Like a swarm of hornets buzzing under your scalp. No. What do you mean? I don't feel it, but... We should still be careful. There were footprints back there, and I'm pretty sure they were fresh. No, but you are the sensitive one. Why are you so salty? Looks like our suspect. If she's in here, we need to plan our next step carefully. Once we detain a credible suspect, who knows what the Union and the Wild Pines will do. We'll set in motion events we have no control over. Mmm, so that's what happens after. Okay. This part of town is a fine clockwork puzzle. Disturb its peace and it will start breaking down uncontrollably. So they don't care that it's day four. Okay. Keep calm. Go over the whole situation in detail. Hmm. You mean Morel? I don't see how cryptozoology and the murder investigation are connected. Well, we are not responsible for what we can't predict, are we? I don't think the entire city will be raised to the ground. Let's try not to worry, Ethan. If you can't predict it, there's nothing you could have done. You're right. However corrupt he may be, nothing happens in Martinez without him knowing. We might have to dirty our hands. In this case, we can't afford to be squeaky clean. Uh, yes. There won't be time for that once things go down. Matter of fact, I don't think there's time for it now, but... If you must. Okay. Why not? Whatever goes down, my dolls... Not closely enough, you suspect. I think I see a cavern. Maybe more cellars? I think we've been careful enough. We still have the element of surprise. I wouldn't be so sure. You haven't exactly been sneaking. True. Or maybe not. Either way, once we go deeper, there will be no turning back. So this is basically where you start the actual ending. And I think I'm gonna go back because fuck this. I am not ready for this. And I'm gonna go back here right after wait maybe this will change the turn of events imagine that oh that would be so cool i mean she could escape and leave me a note oh my god that would be so smooth and genius wow okay so what i want to do is um Shove the lantern up my ass. I want to wait. I really do. I want to wait. Maybe I'll go through my cases. Which is a good way to spend time. But there are some things I want to accomplish. Before I enter the end of the game. One of them is talking with Kim about his sexuality. And mine, you know. Where's the the ledger? Oh, it's in the tools. Why is it in the tools right now? It's the ledger you found in the trash. Oh, and the cool piece of toilet paper. It, without resistance or sound. The two panels move against each other. The compartment is now open. You stare at the card, willing your hand to move. It refuses. It's too much. It's slightly, ever so slightly, difficult to breathe once you've done so. Your hand shakes. You're flushed with adrenaline. 
It takes about half an hour to piece one together, using the system you've devised. Which one do you want? Okay, so this is the place where you go if you want to spend some time. As Logic said, it takes half an hour to review one of the cases, but I found that if you just open it and keep clicking A or 1 if you're playing on keyboard like and all that, you can just pass a lot of time really quickly and you don't need to choose any options. Unlike with the books, when you read in books you need to choose some options uh, or you can get in the loop that will get you back as much times as you click a certain option. So this is just the perfect. Let's see. This one is relatively easy to reconstruct. Let's see what we Overnight have. Overnight on 1202, a graffito, nay, a mural, nay. appears on an eight story tenement overlooking central Jammu. <clears throat> the building is a sparsely inhabited ghost tower, part of a failed real estate development called Grand Couron. The mural is enormous. Two silhouettes, a man and a woman, are kissing. True love is possible only in the next world. For new people, it is too late for us. Wreak havoc on the middle class. People call it that thing and that fucking thing. Mm. It's visible for miles. In two days, the station's complaints desk gets clogged with requests to remove the bummer. You and your partner are assigned to the case. Are we janitors? What the fuck? The graffito crew is easy to track down. Only the bell lectures have the literage of industrial paint to cover the surface. One of the graffito artists is rumored to be rich. They take responsibility for the execution, but not the design. The ideologue of the next world mural, as the crew calls it, remains an unknown. The case files do not show you finding the author of the design. That's a bummer. The crew agrees to clean up after themselves. However, your partner, JV is against the removal, citing public support for conservation. Hmm. This leads to a debate in Precinct 41, which then spreads to the streets of Jamrock, ending in a rare plebiscite organized by you and the rest of Row 3. The 9,000 people subjected to the mural's message, all of Lakeside, Central Jamrock, and Villa Lobos, plus half of the eminent domain, participate in the vote. Although the case begins with what appears to be a lot of rambling on the streets as to how juvenile and stupid the mural is, given a choice between two options, a staggering 78% of voters choose to keep it. Mm. Turns out the opposition were a loud minority. Okay. And that love truly is possible in the next world for new people. And it is too late for us. In any case, it appears to have been a rare case of civil activity in the quarter. And agreement as well. What do you want to tackle next? A.K.A. Leslie and Burke. A.K.A. The public indecency drunk and the property damage drunk is a cursed mm -hmm. case. It has been passed from unsuspecting officer to unsuspecting officer for 10 years. Oh my God. On January 29, the unsolvable case made its way to you. Why you accepted it, it is unclear. Every officer, and indeed most civilians in general, know it's unsolvable. You were so drunk, you didn't remember what it was when you signed on. That, or you were high. Leslie will always take his pants off when he's drunk. Burke will always trash everything. It's just what they do. It is their nature. You cannot change the nature of a man. Of course. And you can't lock them away because public indecency and small-scale property damage are not punishable by incarceration. The only way for Leslie to stop flashing his genitals to bypassers and for Burke to stop dismantling signage and rear-view mirrors would be for them to stop drinking alcohol, which, in their 40s or 50s, it's hard to tell because of their distorted features, is a medical improbability on par with you ceasing to produce the expression. You would think that, but you're wrong. Where's the fun in exposing your genitals or breaking stuff in your own home? No, Leslie and Burke are on the corner of Main Street and Perdition because that's where the action is. Threatening, 
finds, dragging them to the station, locking them up in the hell holes they live in, locking them up in the station, hypnotherapy, even trying to get the local gang of Zemiaki to take them out. The Zemiaki gave them ethanol, so Burke and Leslie would expose and rampage even harder. You tried it all, and still the complaints wouldn't stop, as they hadn't stopped for ten years. Wait, uh, the, the accent makes the word uh, local gang of Zemlaki. Zemlakis. It's kind of funny because I I am like 80%, maybe 95, maybe, maybe even 99.9% .9 sure that this word is um, Zemlak, Zemlaki. Zemlak is from Russian because I kind of, you know, like it's my, it's kind of my uh, native language. So, hmm. It's funny that uh, in English you say, if you, like, how, how do I, if you port a Russian word into English and in Russian it, it's in like a singular form, you need to put S after it if you mean several of those. So, Zemlak is one of those, local gain of, how do I say it in English anyway? I mean, not like a Russian word written in English letters, but an actual English word is like a person who lives on the same in the same place that I am. So you share one land. Hmm. I am not sure I know the exact word for this in English, but in Russian, земля is earth or land, so Zimlak is someone who lives with you on the same land. But the fun part is that they had to put S because there were multiple people. Uh, interesting. It's plain to see from the files that you, Satellite Officer JV and Special Consultant TH had more important cases to attend to. Mm -hmm. You uncover cross-reference to several ongoing investigations, each brought to a standstill every time you drive down Main Street. Because there they are, on the corner of Perdition. And what is Leslie doing? <laughs> Good, you're learning. If the files are to be trusted, that's all there is to it. That and Burke breaking things, mm -hmm. and the fact that they're both drunk. But then again, so are you. The case becomes considerably less comic one day. He must have it confused with the property he likes to damage. But the joke's on him. Oh my God. The officer is also drunk. Way more drunk than Burke there. And let's be fair, you also have party eyes. Hmm. You slam the hardened plastic board in his face, then proceed to beat him unconscious with it. Oh no. In the process, the ledger sustains damage. The compartment within, reserved for permeable documents, is jammed shut. Oh. You stop your assault on the now unconscious Burke to open it, but are unable to do so. The officer began to cry, reports Leslie, who at this point is tending to Burke. Wait, isn't that the place where the letter was lying? Oh my god. How? Like... You know that meme, maybe you don't, most likely you don't, but maybe you do. Like, the world if men went to therapy, like middle-aged men went to therapy. And there's like futuristic images, uh, most likely they're architectural projects rendered by some person who does those projects. And they're like beautiful and the grass is green and the sky is blue and it's all fucking hell. I mean. Why, why do men, why are men this way? I remember asking myself the same question the first time I read these case files, but what the fuck? What the actual fuck? Kill them. They broke it. He came at us, and at us. I think he was trying to kill Burko. 
While trying to kill Burko, you slowly come around. The permeable's compartment is open. You've smashed it open on poor Burko's kneecaps. The good news is, Burke can't walk anymore, can't get out of his apartment, an invalid. With Burke to tend to, Leslie cuts back on the indecent exposure. Maybe he flashes his genitals to Burke, who knows, but both drunks are off the street, which is also why the officer responsible narrowly escapes a disciplinary hearing. The end. Do you want to read another one? I, I'm shook. I have read this case several times, but it hits differently every fucking time. It would be very interesting to read about these, wouldn't it? I mean, there seems to be a square-shaped entry wound in the victim's forehead. She's been sitting there for weeks, on her rocking chair, with a square hole in her skull, staring at the wall. That's all you got. From the half hour you spent piecing it together, all you know is the entry wound was square-shaped. You never found the bullet. And then, another body showed up. Who knows? Those pages are missing. Don't worry. One day. When? Fucking hell, the solo bookcase. Jesus, it's... It's terrible. And he wasn't punished for that, even though he literally ruined the man's life. Well, technically, yeah, he did, but if we forget about the fact that the dude was doing property damage, Harry being a fucking cop, getting fucking drunk, well, oh wait, but that's the irony, because that's actually how policemen work, apparently, and that's why police brutality exists, because they are not trained enough and well they are mostly men who bottle up their emotions and just leave them like that and never work through the traumas so considering that harry was mentally damaged with the breakup that he couldn't get over for several years at, the, at that point well yeah that that I, I am embarrassed to say this, but it makes sense. It is terrible, but it does make sense. Oh my god. So basically what the game tells us is that <laughs> even though two of the main characters that you s almost always see on the screen are male, well, at least the game doesn't tell us that they are not. Even though this happens, one of them is brain damaged, alcoholic, who doesn't know how to cope with his emotions. And, well, yeah, he also uses speed and all that, so he just tries uh, to find a coping mechanism that will keep him going for no reason. Like, he could just kill himself, and he even tried several times. You know, I was... I was kind of... I was disappointed that I couldn't be... Couldn't choose to be a woman in this playthrough, but... <laughs> jokes on them is that... This tandem, actually... This aliens of Kim and Harry and especially Harry and all his mental and brain damage they all make so much sense they make more sense and they can speak like they could speak for feminism even more than a woman protagonist because the dude is fucking insane some assholes brought their couch outside and hung out on it in the middle of the street on the roof on the hillside by the motorway. You know, at an unexpected location. They were young, and they thought they looked cool on it. Yes, as you've said here, insufferable rock and roll assholes. <laughs> young people are the worst. So anyway, you got a complaint about the damn sofa, or couch, or whatever it was. They were leaving it out in all these unexpected and whimsical locations. 
they took it to where they also took photos of themselves on it and smoked cigarettes, cigarette butts, coffee cups, stupid couch. You had to clean it all up, and you did. So congratulations to you. Case solved. What? No, you didn't have time for that. These notes show that you have what is called a real goddamn job. You don't have time to be chasing down the couch assholes. You murder. Tum 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 <laughs> at the hookah parlor was a case originally assigned to an officer called Joseph Mills, who is now dead. Of circumstances completely unconnected to murder at the hookah parlor. Beaten to death by a throng of Villa Lobos gang members when him and his partner JM, only initials mentioned, answered a call one night. It's a sad story and it isn't really represented in your case files. Stop stalling and get to the murder at the hookah parlor. Joseph Mills was on this case that he just couldn't solve, was doing it solo, said it was a real nutcracker, a real brain twister, was on it for, like, a month. Mills didn't get off the pot, not yet. He kept at it for a couple of weeks more, racking his brains, running with every theory as outlandish as they seemed. Still couldn't solve the murder at the Uka parlor. No, he was awful. Awful sense of humor, too. The worst jokes you've ever heard. Really rapey. Still, he'd been on it for months now. Said it was the final case. Said it was uncrackable. That murderer vanished into thin air. That goddamn hookah parlor was all he talked about. The music makes me want to... I just... Uh, I got distracted. I didn't read the, the last... That no, he was awful. Uh, line damage ledger. <laughs> damage ledger is sad, because I was just listening to the music on the background. Like I just want to have like the 5.1 audio system that you can put all around the room and make it so I would lie on the floor and maybe on a soft carpet. And all around me there would be like the speakers and I would listen to this song and just lie on the floor for an hour because I don't think I can lie longer I think I can like without the phone without anything just listening to this music That would be terrible. Like, I think I could... No, I, I won't say that. No. Okay, so the case is handed to you because Mills isn't getting anywhere, and you look into it. Here's the setup. A young man is found dead in a hookah parlor. You know, those places where you go and smoke bubblegum-flavored vapor all day. No, it's soot and water vapor. It doesn't do anything. Yeah, so anyway... Young man in his 20s found with his skull busted open. Wow. Right on the floor of the hookah parlor in the middle of the day. No one else is in there. Only client that day. In perfect health too. No one enters. No one exits. He's just sucking on his watermelon hookah all morning. All noon. Like he usually does. He's a regular. No calls. Nothing. Just sucking on the hookah. Mills has no idea. Invisible assassin. Movie deal gone sour. Girl at the counter did it. Nothing fits. Eerie. Man just dropped dead. So you go to the parlor. You see cushions around the table. See? You can't even read the thing without solving it. <laughs> yeah. It was that. Turns out hookah does do something. It turns off your brain's oxygen supply. And you don't notice it until you get up to go to the bathroom. Yeah, he liked his hookah. Stephen was his name. Smoking hookah. <laughs> Didn't you hear? I don't know. Trying to come up with a movie script, maybe. Anyway, that was Murder at the Hookah Parlor. Joseph Mills wasn't a good detective, and about 30 minutes has passed piecing it together. Next. It's funny because, it's funny, 
We need to spend time. Kim, go to bed. Kim, go to bed. Go to... Go to sleep, my dear. Just go to sleep. The oh, case yeah. files do not show you finding the author of the design. As in any a case, it appears more. to have been. True love is possible. Of people... Okay. The Graffito crew is easy to track down. Okay. The case file... Okay. The crew agree... Okay. The 9,000 people... Sub okay. A staggering 78% of... No one cares what you believe in. Man, not okay. much has changed in the me... Thoughts? Jamais vu. Derealization. Yay. I love it. Jamais vu. The opposite of deja vu. Not already seen, but never seen. Everything that should be familiar appears strange and new, like some half-forgotten day in your childhood. Only now. That's the feeling you've been having. And for who knows how long. You should go and ask Joyce Messier about this. What world are we in? This is a fundamental question. Oh, so this is the thought literally connected just to Joyce. Okay. Homosexual underground. Oh, yes. Maybe you should stop obsessing about your own and other people's sexuality. Feels like it's about time to do that. You thought about this for eight hours. Not only should you stop, you should tell Kim mm -hmm. you've stopped obsessing about other people's sexuality too. I'm sure he'd appreciate it. Unless you already got him killed because you were obsessing about your sexuality. God. There's no way of telling from within your brain. But for your own sake, please say you didn't. It's fucking hilarious. Kim, we need to talk. Yes? Okay. Great. Imagine all the time you'll have for work now. Matter of fact, we should get back to it right now. He turns his attention elsewhere. What? <laughs> you didn't stop at all, did you? You are just obsessing about other people's sexuality now. But am I? I'll spare you another 20 hour mind project. Yes, I am. <laughs> now let's get back to work. Oh, I love it. It's. it's Amazing. Okay. Me too. I haven't. It's getting. Good, Good night, night officer. officer. I haven't had a chance to work on the suicidal thought. I'm not going to sleep though. I am not. I just hope I'm gonna finish this day today, you know, <clears throat> so I wanna sleep. Oh, okay. Now we're going back, need to go to talk, to go to talk to jurors. English is confusing. Joyce, my love. You're back. Good. What can I help you with? More lessons in basic reality? My favorite part of the day. Okay, so maybe you complete, but still not enough. Conceptualization. I guess we're gonna wear that smelly... Where is it? Where is that? First of all, I need this. Oh, I am already wearing that. Okay, okay. So, do I have anything else that could boost conceptualization? That's not how you pronounce it, but well, anyway. I have absolutely no chance to. You're back. More lessons fail. in basic reality. What is all of this? The scent, the sound. 
the air. What world? <laughs> the only one, I suppose. The camera of her mind glides over the surface of the water. Great bodies of water, mm -hmm. forest covered surfaces, clusters of light where the cities lie. You've seen the montage. We all have. A freeze on lifts the hair on the back of your arm. Wind sweeps the surface of the bay. The world is a suzerainty of Revachol. <laughs> there is a term of endearment they coin for it in the DeLorean century, when humanity was high on this world, discovering more and more of it, these archipelagos included. Elysium. Elysium. Yeah. It does. There are those who would call it hell. A term of hatred that originates, like many such things, with the Mesk Petro fascists. Oh, you want a picture of the world? There is no complete set yet, dear. They're having some trouble reaching orbit. Great things are difficult to achieve. For now, we're viewing the world from the inside, sideways. That's looking less and less likely, Detective. You wouldn't know it from the tabloids, but the ORG nations have been launching weather balloons into the lower ionosphere since the 30s. ORG, Occident Revachol Grad. There's a steadily increasing trickle of images. Between the big three, they're piecing together a dark gray corona. Corona. Yes. Pale covers 72% of the surface. There are gray flares and prominences even arcs above entire isolas. The images are blurry, but if there was a sphere in there, it certainly looks like it fractured a long time ago. Okay. A cold fear seeps into you. You seem to be spooked. Yeah, I am. Please don't be. They say there is a rarefied envelope of matter surrounding the darkened disk of our planet. That is, if we are still living on a planet, or, to speak more plainly, imagine vast swathes of land disrupted by nothingness. I am sorry, dear. It must sound quite terrifying through the acute encephalopathy. Even scientific positivism isn't entirely convinced about what we're dealing with here. But this is one of the greatest questions of our time. Maybe when they get the complete set together, it will jolt us out of our rut, bring us together. You have misimagined it. I don't have the power to convey to you the effect and geometry of the images that depict our world from below low orbit. It's like the crowning of the world. It's insane. Very disco. You'd love it. <laughs> I don't care about disco, I don't care about the commune. <laughs> oh, should I pick it? See, everyone finds something worth holding on to in this world. However wasted its opportunities. Well. The cold seeps into you. Suddenly, you're conscious of yourself standing there. On whatever this all is. The pale is not, technically speaking, part of reality. It is the opposite of reality. Okay. The pale is the most dominant geological feature of the world, detective. Wow. The separative tissue between the Islas. It is the inter mass. Isola is a Mycenaean word for a continent of matter, enveloped on all sides by the pale. Also, isolation, or landmass. We used to believe there was only one. In the last <coughs> four centuries, we have discovered seven. Windy, Seol, Samara, Ilmara, Grad, Katla, and this Insulinde. Achromatic, odorless, Featureless. The pale is the enemy of matter and life. It is not like any other or anything in the world. It is the transition state of being into nothingness. Wait, isn't the pale like some sort of. Hmm. The pale is the enemy of matter and life. This line just made me, reminded me of one episode of, oh my god, of uh, Bon Appetit Test Kitchen. Bon Appetit. 
this what it's called and they had that before they encountered may i say it like that um a racial scandal and they did it's basically they have a youtube channel and they have a blog in the blog they post some recipes they cook stuff and on the youtube channel they post videos about cooking some things and uh, up until last year uh, they had a crew with different members that were occupied in different uh, areas of cooking so there was uh, Claire she is the dessert person dessert dessert yeah she's a sweet tooth she likes to bake some something out of the dough some bread and she was doing some cakes that's the short of it because oh she had a huge series named what what, what was it called gourmet gourmet makes and she was making like a gourmet version of uh, snack bars of like Kit Kat, Snickers and all that. It was amazing. It was very popular. And I, I loved it. I watched nearly all of the episodes they had. That was exactly before I discovered video games, as you can tell. And there were also other people. There was Carla. She, I don't really remember what she was cooking, what was her priority. There was, there was also Brad, that's the guy I wanted to talk about. Brad Leone, he was uh, fermenting stuff. And he also inspired me to ferment some drinks and even food. Oh my god, I was making sau sauerkraut. It was so, so nice. Yeah, it was, I, I made it like once. I remember my mother and my grandmother making it. And then I was like, oh, I want to do it by Brad's recipe. Oh, it was interesting. And basically the, the fundamental rule of fermentation is that oxygen is the enemy of matter and life. That's what the pale reminded me about. And well, considering that we are living in a world where, yeah, uh, about 80%, or about 75% of the surface of the earth is covered in the water. But has anyone ever considered how much oxygen uh, is like around the world? It's, it's immaculate, it's like a lot. So what if <laughs> the pale is the enemy of matter and life? It's something, something like Cons concerning the oxygen that is also matter, an enemy of matter and life. Because literally oxygen can oxidize iron, so it becomes rusty, so you can't use stuff anymore if it was with, um, it was interacting with water and oxygen. Plus all the food that you eat, all the meals, if you leave them uh, uncovered, not in the fridge, just somewhere in your room, it gets rough and it spoils every time. So that's why Brad was telling that oxygen is the man is the enemy of everything that lives. Hmm. But at the same time, People cannot live without oxygen, because we need to breathe it in. I don't know why, why. Okay, let's, let's keep playing. Let's just keep playing. I just, I... <sighs> no, detective. We're safe. It begins there, 6,000 kilometers to the north, and even more to the south, east, and west. You are in the middle of the Isola. Okay, no, it's not the same. It's As your gaze instinctively abort. turns north, a small black pit opens up in your stomach. Yes. That is enough. An uproar of matter, darling. Rising into the pale. Rolling. Evaporating even. A great vision. Mm. The area of transition between the world and the pale is called porch collapse 
Imagine a grey coronal mist, cold vapour marked by spores of an opportunistic microorganism, a mould that's adapted to grow at the edge of the unrest. It's uh, the most disco thing you will ever see. I wouldn't be so sure. You hear your pulse rise. The air feels caustic and cold suddenly. It's difficult to describe, or even measure. Something whose fundamental property is the suspension of properties. Wow. The further into pale you travel, the steeper the degree of suspension, right down to the mathematical. Numbers stop working. No one has yet passed the number barrier. It may... Oh, it is so difficult for us. A squall of birds. <clears throat> Hardware operating in the harbor. It is possible to force dimensions on the pale. In modern times, we can even compress its latitude, bouncing radio waves from one end to the other, mm. shortening the path. But it is still hard for humans to navigate the pale without getting lost or having our minds damaged extensively. Some say the damage stems from extreme sensory deprivation. Okay. Others argue that pale somehow consists of past information that's degrading, that it's rarefied past, not rarefied matter. They call it the blend over of the self. The pale does not only suspend the laws of physics, but also the laws of psychology, maybe history even. The human mind becomes over-radiated by past. Did Harry's mind get over-radiated by, by the past because he was exposed to the pale? I mean, I think if I'm gonna Google something like that about Harry Dubois, Harry, Harry Dubois being exposed to pale, I think I would find some theories because it, it makes perfect sense. It feels terrible. Absolutely terrible. International standards strictly limit civilian travelers to six days of pale exposure per year. Which is kind of funny because, uh, continuing what I say, said previously, because if it's not, if he wasn't exposed to the pale, then he's just such a dumbass that got drunk and high and mind broken at the same time that he just forgot everything. And right now he's trying to recover and he may or may not let his past take over him. It's more for her, way more. No, Lieutenant Dubois. I'm entrepreneurial business class. Okay. I'm cleared and trained for 22 days of pale transit annually. Perhaps that explains a strange pining after the revolution. Someone else you've met may have been exposed as well. Mm -hmm. The strange gray-haired woman in her lorry. Yes, carried in the hulls of airships. It's a horrific job. That poor woman must have stories to tell, like you wouldn't imagine. Up to my gills, officer. An acidic smile on her lips. It's getting worse every year. Entrepreneurics is the scientific study of the pale. Mm. or a recent iteration of it by way oh. of grad. The study of the pale reaches back 6,000 years. There are signs of pre-modern crossings. Successful navigation of the pale relies not just on technical know-how, but intensive psychological preparation. Nothing. We remain powerless before the pale. The okay. only real advance in pale transit is the speed with which an aerostatic craft can pierce it. Hmm. Less ex hybrid airships, detective. Oh, okay. Conventional rotors or jet engines no longer add velocity after the point of reference for motion is suspended. In essence, we throw them in and they come out the other end. If we throw them precisely, then they don't. Oh. The pale outweighs reality two to one. There is more pale than there is matter. What do you think, detective? Precisely. One of the few measurable effects of an intuitive conclusion of that development is that one day the pale will cover everything. But this sort of talk is mostly left. Most people, and indeed most private and government sector organizations, entire. I suggest you do the same. Off we go. 
you see the hanged man's mouth open. One and all. Mm. They say pale is death, but for the universe. Why should we just leave and leave and the world get left behind? Yes, sweet reality. Is this the first time you're hearing this? Do you really not remember anything? Then tell me, what do you think of the pale? <laughs> it's advance can all be stopped with immediate total ruthless communism. I don't think that this choice actually has any impact on what Joyce has to say to me. <laughs> well, this one is kind of good. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's the same every time. Your ailing constitution. You really didn't know. This does not spell good for the investigation, detective. If you don't steal yourself, officer. <laughs> Your colleague, Lieutenant Kitsaragi, okay. he is competent. I checked up on him. And you also have me. I will try to assist you. Some of that assurance is meant for herself, mm -hmm. as much as it's meant for you. Even if we have to do it one basic term at a time. Glad to have been of assistance. Oh, that was interesting. I'm kind of sad that my theory didn't work out with the pale and the resemblance to oxygen. Well, it was, it was kind, of, kind of strange. Uh, can I not? What? Wait, I need to. What does it, what does it mean? What? Wait. There's no way. Why can I can't I fast travel? I can I can go by foot, of course, but um, hmm. I'm kind of scared. The last time I couldn't fast travel from the fishing village or the church was the time when the tribunal started, which I do not want to. We started right now. Oh wait. <laughs> One sec. What is this? Oh, okay. Where does Kim take his motor carriage every single night? How come? Woman, grey-haired woman, please help me. Loman, you caught me at an opportune moment. And what is that? Oh, my Deus. <laughs> the Loman solved the case. Yes. And here I was, thinking you were an idiot. Well, I, so, well. are you? Republica, a filterless cigarette from me. Well, I, I, uh, maybe. Neither is spell transportation. Life is transitory. Like Gabriel Buenguerro in Segureme Paraiso. You're the opposite of me, then. I remember everything. The smell of liquor on Gabriel's lips after the shoot. In the motor park. The roses on the day of Franco Negro's coronation. On the grand stairs of Ryle. The smoke from the fouling piece when Dolores Day was shot. First of all, wow, Dolores Day. And why, why, by the way, why does Harry have this thing for Dolores? Is, is he like imagining, what if, oh my God, oh no. First of all, so the pale swallows whole, when I was doing the, um, net worthy individual quest it's is it a quest i don't think it's a it's a task first of all but there was an achievement in steam it was called net worthy individual and i wanted to get it so i was 
researching it and what, 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 what can I do. It was kind of fun to play, by the way. Mm. So when, in, at some point while getting this achievement, I had to talk to the Idiot Doom Spiral. Is that what he's called? Why, why is that, why is the word idiot all over the game? Maybe, I thought it was ableist? Okay, never mind. So, when I was talking to the Doom Spiral guy, uh, he said he, he could help me with promoting myself at the, as a brand and he suggested to put some slogan on the monument that is right now it's somewhere behind me like that Guillaume third or whatever a guy on a horse I could put the slogan on him and I could choose the slogan I wanted to put and that was quite nice and one of them was Bale swallows all and it's kind of interesting and you know why because what if the pail swallows the, all the dead people and maybe even their souls. Let's get a little bit supernatural here. Because I'm a supernatural cop, kind of. I try to be. And then their memories are scattered. And whenever someone is crossing the pail, they may or may not get some memories from people who died already because look Gabriel is some maybe fictional character that they've shot the show upon and so he was shot and if he was a real person then they would like capture this after and then the coronation, it, it also happened in the real world, so people saw this and this actually happened and all that. And Dolores Day was real as far as I remember, so even though people said that she was not, she was, because she was a person. <sighs> the look on her face, like an orgasm. Mm. The wound in her chest, my hand in my father's hand. Except I never had a father, and I never shot her innocent of Dolores Day. Heroic doses, her affair. Thought insertion, dithering. The grad Catalan magistra, when you've seen it all go away like that, rolling off like the sea, and then come back to this. What are we doing here? For thousands of years, Gabriel, like looking into the ocean at night. You cannot see it, but you know it's there. And it's big, bigger than anything. Nothing, until it starts. When you are deep enough, then for me, it's like <clears throat> autumn. Dark, gray, and orange. Nostalgia. In the belly of an airship, behind the cell windows. So you don't look straight into it. It's not advised to look into it. No, the same one, a roller. They all are nowadays. Special wheels for connecting to the floor. The wheels all small and round. Yes. They say there is a point, one that I have not crossed. In the pearl, super deep. If you stray too far, of course, on the U41A. Or in Lomonot, it's a point you cannot come back from. Your mind becomes so radiant with the past, there is a flip. Instead of writing, it erases memory, nearing some kind of indescribable finale. Maybe you've been down the motorway south. It's a story as Lone Horse Man tell. Lone Horse Man, Harifa, not Pell Drivers. Way beyond the established Pell that's lit by radio frequencies and dark. And the process begins, erasure, kilometer by kilometer. In the center of this town, there's a ghostly motorway, she sang. They say I've been away on a kind of holiday. 
No one knows what's at the end. I've only glimpsed the beginning. I've only felt it in the distance when I was a child. <sighs> there is nothing more to do now. She is receding in the clutches of... Wait, so I will have one more day tomorrow. I'm just wondering, like, developers added a suicidal thought. Finger on the eject button. I want to internalize it, but I don't seem to... I cannot fast travel. Okay. Never mind. I want to internalize finger on the eject button and to live through exactly one or two evenings when it actually takes place. The point of the thought is that you want to kill yourself. This thought seems familiar to me and the thing is with this game that when you have this thought in your thought cabinet you can you think about killing yourself at 9 p.m. every day and the only time I have had this thought internalized was already when the end of the game was near so it was not like one the day one two three and so on it was day seven maybe so i literally could not exist <laughs> in this world in revishal for any longer because it was the end of the game so it's kind of confusing <laughs> I, I can't believe I will have to play this game once again to do that. Yes, what is it? Are you serious? Okay. I'll be right back. Logic, here I come. I need to have plus two. Okay, never mind. Oh, okay. Plus three. Oh my god. Do I have something from this one? I I think I had Apollo. Oh. Okay. Yes, what is it? I just dressed up. You don't have to. You already have. A long time ago. These thoughts formed in you somewhere. In a long forgotten discussion. Behind the kitchen table. In the evening light. This kind of discussions is the best kind of discussions. Drinking coffee and smoking. Yes. With a friend. And a woman. She was there too. Her hair smelled of shampoo and she was smoking. What? But... but Pale isn't here. We're thousands of kilometers from the edge. That comforts her. Hmm. <clears throat> she looks up into the darkness under the nave, then back at you. Then what is that? It's nothing. No, it's less. Then nothing. No. Then the pale is... But the gradient... It clearly hasn't started yet. We are here and the pale is not. I understand. A theory of the pale where instead of an outer ocean, it metastasizes. Mm -hmm. Like a cancer or a mold. Erupting in points inside the world. According to this, how long... And information causing data losses in the East in Celindian front. Have you considered why it's formed in a church 
and also when or how it might start growing or if it has other effects in addition to sound and data. An intellectual hunger fills her now, casting fear aside. Hmm. Of course, a pine wood sarcophagus or a, a containment facility of some kind built by the first set. I have considered the same. The bad news is there were seven. Most of them were burnt down during the revolution or repurposed before during the suzerain. Some of them might. Okay. A black grain hanging in the... You think the presence of that puncture has somehow influenced the outcome? She already made up her mind when she heard it. Some kind of great and uncaring force had to play a part. It wasn't only them. I told the producers we need to go and move to a normal office building with amenities. But no, the artists like the milieu, the writers like the history. I told them. Do, do I no. I told them. But no. Normal office build Yes, it is very interesting. But I wouldn't say you know. This is a guess. She falls silent. The wind blows in through the hole in the stained glass. I'm going to leave that out. But the rest? Some of this I can use to start to explain this to the rest of the team. You know, maybe a club for anodic music isn't the worst thing you can erect around this particular point in space. Yeah! <laughs> Once the light is on in the universe, it will never go out. What is there to add to that? Nothing. That's nice. Oh, I think I'm, I will uh, conclude this playthrough with a little dance. Oh no, wait. <gasps> No way, I have failed that check and I have absolutely... Oh no... Oh hey man, no. it's good to see you! Fuck! Goodbye officer! I don't know how to expand... Oh my god, please... No! <laughs> I need to erase the learning caps. Oh wait, I can do drugs. Wait, wait. Let's just... Maybe I will just uh, do this then. Reload. Because I was planning not to use anything. What? Now that you've acquired some stimulants, it's time for a little pick-me-up. Time to detect. It will make you into more than that. Mega cop. A mega cop. This is your modus operandi. See? That's your problem. A lack of confidence. You raise the preptide bottle. Okay. Press one nostril close and inhale fury. Now the taste is slowly receding into your throat. The rush is growing in intensity. Your okay. little heart pounding like a bird in a cage. Hmm. You could work with this high. Like, literally, work. Solve the case. File some papers. Maybe clean up your hostel room, then solve another case, then start a side investigation into the paranatural, then build a radio computer. Oh, so now you're talking. Whoa, this shit is strong. This shit is disco. Spring, spring. Everything is clear around you. Oh, yeah. What was it? Composure check, yeah? Okay. They raise all the, le the le learning caps. Oh my god, I didn't know about that. Oh, hey man, it's good 58. To see you. Goodbye, Wait, I'm gonna just say once again. Oh, hey I just man, want to show to you. this to you. You close your oh, eyes yeah. and vacate your skull, leaving your brain to wonder where did that little fluttering light go? Total darkness. Yes. You sink down the darkest fathoms of your own personal deep. Vertebrate by vertebrae. 
through the unformed scowls of your mind. Here it will begin. Who fucking cares? God, where is your God? Mm -hmm. Oh, don't worry. The music's still there. This is a pivotal moment. Try not to piss yourself. Nothing. Just the immaculate silence of your spinal fluid. It comes to you like a blue whale. You Aww. sense the stir of the tranquility of the deep. This is so good. Of the bass passing through. Then it's gone. But this is where the beat plunged. Psst. I'm gonna let you in on a little <laughs> secret. Every vertebrate in your spine is an unformed skull ready to pop up and replace the old one. Like shark teeth. The one you're currently in has a little brain forming in it. <laughs> waiting for its turn. To rule the world. In the spinal cord. From what I can see. It's about to bust a move. This is literally the best check in the entire game. Foolhardy! Do you even know what's happening on the surface? Maybe a thousand years have passed. Or maybe you started spazzing out like two seconds ago. With your eyes still oh, closed. Oh, yeah. The first thing you feel, all the way back in the pivoting darkness of your own torso, is warmth. You have become a triumph of rhythmoplastics, somewhere in a smelly wooden church on the coast of Revachon. The wounds from the war you waged on your body are healing, twist by twist, turn by turn. You must have touched upon an entirely new way of moving the human body. Every motion is pumping your brain full of endorphins. Open your eyes to the pioneering glory of hard style. It's, it's beautiful. You have become a flawless interlocking mechanism, a flesh and bone approximation of the throb coming from the speaker setup of the one called Eggheads. Entirely rigidly <laughs> imbecilic, without pity, or fear, free from self-awareness, no deliberation, only, and I mean only, execution. Oh my God! No way! With his reel-to-reel -reel mixer blasting the anthem of a future that will never come, the young man observes your moves for a second. Ah! <laughs> he throws a screwdriver and a bunch of Yay! drill chunks into the corner and explodes into dance. What he lacks in sharpness, he more than makes up for. In the young man immediately bounces up and down, then assumes the same dance pattern, embellishing it with some sort of waving motion. The authority of the law is clearly unquestionable. Nice. The young woman lifts her headphones up slightly. Assume? Aren't you going to dance? No. <laughs> Recording. The lead programmer throws the other young woman a knowing glance before turning her attention back to her own work. She's still at her mainframe, pressing buttons, reading printouts, but she started bumping her head along to the music. The dynamic motion of your flailing body is bordering on the extreme. You feel as if turning on the hyperdrive would be a point of no return feels almost melancholy. Mm. Are you sure you have the entire posse along for this? Yes. Here we go again. Hardcore fills the air. The sound above my head. Am I spitted it? Oh, okay. Okay. On the coast of the Martin. I love Island, it. In a small weather beaten stave church built 380 years ago by settlers from the Occident most likely to guard against an anomaly at its center. An officer of the RCM is contorting his body into idiotically rigid shapes. 
as he invents the future of dance music. It's the hardest anyone has ever danced. I am La Revachelière. I am the city. I am a fragment of the world spirit, the genius Loki of Revachel. My heart is the wind corridor. The bottom of my air is red. I have a hundred thousand luminous arms. Come morning, I carry industrial dust and let it settle on tree leaves. I shake the dust from those leaves and onto your coat. I've seen you. I've seen you. I've seen you with her. And I've seen you without her. I've seen you on the crescent of the hill. The modulations of my voice are noted down with thermometers and barometers. You feel me in your nostrils, on the little hairs on the back of your neck. I also reside in your lungs and vestigial organs. Everywhere there is space. You are an officer of the citizens' militia, Jean Tinerbu. When you wear your coat, you wear my soul. You move through my streets freely, in motor carriages and on foot. You have access to the hidden places. You also circulate among those who are hidden. I need you. You can keep me on this earth. Be vigilant. I love you. An officer of the RCM is lying on the I'm floor sorry. of a small church with his eyes rolled back and his tongue lolling out. Several others had a good rest there. Fuck yeah! Mm -hmm. I bet you did. Those were some advanced moves, man. That's that's what I mean. That's what I meant when I said said that you this might is be imagining it, but it feels like Egghead turned the volume down. Such is his respect. This is one of the best checks in the game because, well, I mean, if you were watching, you would agree with me. Man, now, now, man, now, now imagine if we could do that, right? End of human development, mission complete, all right. You're absolutely beat. Muscles relaxed and feet like noodles underneath. Goodbye, officer. Okay, this was really interesting, but for the purposes of uh, finishing... Wait. Let's just check on this. I think that was before I took the speed. If it was, I'm just going to fucking sleep. Ultimate game and in real life. Oh please. Oh please. Yes. Wait, why well, what do I have equipped? Nothing. Okay, so did I I can check on my on my tasks. Bail. Low down. Wait. Yes, what is it? Yeah, it's all done. That's nice. I'm just I'm just curious. Uh, at the end uh, people are like mocking you about being an addict. In the big picture. It doesn't really matter if you were an addict for a lot of years and stopped being one for seven days. But I'm just, I'm just, I just want to shove it up their faces that I am not an addict anymore. It's getting cold. Wait, wait, can I please fast travel? Why not? Did I miss something? What the fuck? Okay. 
I will just hope that Lina is still there and Morel. It really, it, it really reads Lina, because in Russian it is Lena, not Lina. I mean the way it. Okay, no, never mind. Why can I not fast travel? What the hell? She's here! Ever stop the traps, my my darling? Thank you for doing that, dear. Her smile is weary. Her earlier ebullience has left her. Oh. Morel still isn't feeling well. I convinced him to stay at Gary's to get some rest. I'm afraid the cold has really gotten to him. Yes. Field work <clears throat> is a young person's game, as they say. True. Morel will eventually, or we'll talk Gary into going back out, perhaps. <clears throat> You've come so far. You can't leave those locusts there, waiting on the ghost read with no one to witness when it appears. That really is too much, sweetie. Very strange. Why is she... Different? How? I'm not. It's not bad. It's a, a strange feeling. I haven't really told this to anyone, but... And when a police officer asks? Do you ever wonder if some lovely story from your childhood is... Hunching her shoulders now. Wait. She seems no. even smaller than she is. Seeing the Insulindian phasmid was just a story I used to tell people. Morel's so proud of it. A terrible sting in the heart. Regret. <laughs> so you haven't seen it? Should I should arrest you for lying. What the fuck? N no, sweetie. There's more to it than that. Morel was so eager to believe my stuff that I'm mm. some queen of the cryptozoologists. That I am a queen? An extraordinary witness. But now, we're both getting old and he's still working himself sick out in those reeds looking for it. But what if I was just wrong? I think I was. An acorn is not the same as the tree. That requires time, diligence and care. And I need something good here. All qualities, these two seem to share in abundance. But it is. We've spent years searching for the phasmid, hunting it together. Without it, what are we? If I hadn't led him down this path, he could have a steady job lecturing at a university. Hmm. Oh my god. Ugh. But if the dream comes to naught, what good is it? No, the thing is... Wait, I just realized that this Elysium is most likely one of the pieces of art, like uh, the Fight Club, 500 Days of Summer, and all that, and Scott Pilgrim Against the World that are meant to be oh and and there's also the one with christian bale uh, american psycho yeah so it's meant to be satiric how do, how do i say this in english like it's ironic but i am pretty sure that there were some people who took the main character seriously. And this is sad. I was a paraplegic before we met. 
She has to swallow to relax her throat. It's keeping her from talking. Maybe. But then why do I not dare tell him? What you have to know is the Insulindian fast myth probably does not exist. No! Let us fools chase our ghosts. There are a million better things to do with your life. A true believer. Sometimes I still see it too. The real memory of it. How it was there. Not the memory of the memory, but it's so hard to tell the two apart. Well, after all these years, of course. Yeah. Unfolding from the reeds on a hot summer's day. Either way, I should go. Poor Morel is running a fever and I need to get him home to Jamrock before we overstay our welcome with Gary. You too, sweetie. Thank you for everything, truly. Even though it turned out to be a... A dream. A fool's hope. Say, like that, she drives off. The guest enters quietly as she gets to the doors, then pushes them open. Outside, somewhere out there, a kilometre to the southeast, a gust of wind shakes the felled building, rattling dusty windows, beckoning with strange coldness to ask the wind once more. You know why? Because it's uh, tomorrow's day five. Tomorrow is day five. And that is the time when I need to, you know. The tribunal and all that. We will see. But really, where does Kim park his kinema? What the fuck? I thought he leaves it here and then goes to sleep in the whirling in rags. Right? Well, okay. It's almost 1 am. I went to sleep. Tired as hell, jeez. I got two vaccines yesterday. They were like some... Uh, one of them was the vaccine that you need to get once in 10 years. And the second one is against some... Or uh, I won't even try to, you know. It's getting late. Yes. We are gonna call it a day. But I will not go to sleep this time. Because I will do this. Maybe tomorrow even. Maybe I'm gonna get this achievement tomorrow. Oh my god, this would be so nice. And you're getting to see my favorite scene. Oh my god. So that's kind of it.